This is the Liberty Beat for Monday, October 27, 2014. I'm Brian Hagan reporting, reminding you, spread liberty with a smile. Could dropping bombs on Afghans without warning from terrifying robot airplanes that fly themselves actually hurt America's efforts to stabilize Afghanistan? It's complicated. No, 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 not, not at all. Actually, I think we need to stay the course. You don't change horses midstream, and you don't stop uh, firing well, missiles from unseen death droids uh, soaring high above the clouds just because a couple of schools get blown well, up. I, we have got to find another way to obliterate this population. What about flaming bulldozers or 50-foot tall tanks? Let's yeah. do what we can for these civilians. I mean, why not name the drones Billy or Steve to make them seem less dispassionate. Oh, that is a terrible idea. Billy is a horrible name for a drone. They're now developing a 40-foot robot that actually looks more like an American soldier and also uh, sprays lasers out of his eyes. Well, at least Smart. that's a step forward. Hey, look, as long as it fires missiles and bombs with very little accuracy and zero Americans are at threat, I'm all for it. Good point. They Duncan. should give it funny, floppy arms. Yes. Oh, it should spray uh, candy out of its chest a few minutes before yeah. it starts shooting yeah. everything. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. You can dial in toll-free here. The number, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Tonight with you in the studio, it's Ian. Oh, Derek, I should turn your microphone on. Let's and Derek J. That sounds much better. Great to have you here with me uh, tonight, Derek J. You are gearing up for, uh, we are gearing up for, many of the activists here in the Keene, New Hampshire area, gearing up for Keenevention this weekend, uh, been working on things like maps to events and that kind of thing. We've got a social bonfire happening, and, and then there's going to be a, a dance party, actually, a costume dance party, given that it's Halloween weekend. A uh, costume dance party that you are throwing. The last time you threw a dance party, you got arrested. <laughs> so hopefully it's going to go better this time. Uh, we're it's going to, got to. Yeah, It's going to be a lot of fun. <laughs> we're going to be inside the hotel. They know we're going to be there. The last time you got arrested was during your victimless crime spree uh, when you threw a quiet dance party in Central Square. That was on public property. We'll be on private property this time, so I think we're, we're going to be all right. Um, it's going to be a... A costume dance party to benefit Ross Ulbricht. And I've actually got an update on the Ross Ulbricht case coming up here in a moment. He is the man who's accused of operating the Silk Road, the underground, uh, infamous underground drug and other interesting things like fake IDs, that sort of thing, marketplace uh, online. He's facing the rest of his life pretty much in prison. And uh, right now he's sitting in a prison cell awaiting his trial. You can go now to freeross.org if you want to help him out. Uh, also, the upcoming dance party uh, during Keenvention, which is this weekend on Saturday night. Uh, that's right. It's a Halloween dance party, but it's happening on November 1st. Uh, it will go. The, all of the proceeds will go to every dollar that's taken in at the door uh, will go to uh, to Ross Ulbricht's defense fund. So. I'm very excited for that reason about this party. I'm excited as well. It's a perfect benefit. Ross will be there in spirit. I'll be thinking of him as well. And, you know, I'm curious about this update as well. Well, we're going to get into that, but uh, we're going to start with the dance party topic because you actually have some show prep here that has nothing to do with our dance party. I don't think we've, we haven't asked anyone for permission except for the hotel at which we're having uh, the convention to do this. So we uh, did not think to, nor would we be interested in talking to the, the state but apparently in St. George, Utah, where we are on the air on KZNU, uh, apparently there's some trouble brewing for one dance party promoter. That's right. According to stgeorgeutah.com, a Halloween party at Fiesta Fun Center Friday night had unexpected guests in blue uniforms oh show up to shut down a part of the event. They actually waited until the event to send in a squad of cops? Yep, to, to squash the dance party. Wow. Just that part of it. Organizers say they had a city-approved permit allowing it. City officials say they didn't. <laughs> so, <laughs> I don't know. They, they had to produce the piece of paper, right, to say, here, here's our permit. Well, that's in dispute. So, let's talk about the event. The Monster Mash, as it was called, was an event organized by the Heart of Dixie event group that advertised unlimited access to bumper boats, go-karts, mini-golf, 
and a dance party. Sounds like a family like fun a blast. event. Yeah, that's a lot of fun. And the event was to run from 9 p.m. Friday to 1 a.m. Saturday. Okay. Awesome. Mm-hmm. Great event. Sometime between 9.30 and 10 p.m., around 5 to 6, St. George police officers arrived on scene instructing that no dancing was to take place. Wow. Yep, that's <laughs> according to Brett Crockett, the owner of Fiesta Fun Center. Wow, ridiculous! It's, I mean, you would think that in the 21st century, that this is all over and done with, right? I mean, this is something you expect to hear out of 1920 or 1914, not 2014. But here we are. <laughs> it's really dancing surprising. prohibited. It always reminds me of uh, that movie Footloose, where there's a town where dancing is prohibited altogether. I don't even think you can acquire a permit for right. dancing. But in this case, at least the city will allow some <laughs> dancing. As long as you if pay you the city fathers, you can dance. That's right. Maybe. You know, who knows if they're going to come and say, oh, wait, never mind. Because that seems to be what well, happened here. You know where there's dancing, Derek J. There's interracial relationships. There's drug use. There's all kinds of terrible, terrible things. Yeah, it's the path to hell, really, <laughs> dancing. So while Crockett supplied the venue and extra amenities and security for the Monster Mash, he didn't have a hand in securing a disputed permit allowing dancing. He said there was no no beef with the music. That's his quote. It was just the mere fact of no dancing allowed. So it's not even like during my dance party, they complained. They said it, it was the, the music, music. Which it wasn't because you couldn't hear the music outside of Central Square. From yes. what I understand, I wasn't there because I was in jail. At the it was time. baloney. And uh, in this case, they're on private property mm-hmm. and you can't hear the music outside on the street. Right. So that's not the excuse. It's actually just the fact of dancing. So uh, Carly Jarvis, a security supervisor for the Heart of Dixie, said a special events permit had been obtained that allowed dancing as part of it. So they were clear that they did get the permit for this. Both Jarvis and Crockett said Jared Keddington, with the promoter of the event, showed the officers their permit. So they showed them the piece of paper. They had it on hand. Despite this, however, Jarvis said... They did as the police instructed and didn't hold the dance party portion of the Monster Mash. So they shut them down, even though they had on paper, they had the permission that they needed. So they were saying that their permit, the paperwork, included dancing. Yes. The police were saying, nuh-uh. Exactly. Yep, yep. (laughs) And it's right there in black and white. So Crockett said the announcement was even made over the center's speakers that there was absolutely no dancing at that (laughs) event. The rest of the event, the music. Now, wait the- a minute. Before you before you go on here, so there's a couple of important questions. One, what defines dancing? I mean, how much <laughs> yeah. do you need? Do you need to move your hips in order to dance? Can toe tapping be considered dancing? How much of one's body must be in motion before one has crossed the line into dancing? You're no longer standing. You're now dancing. Yeah. Yeah. What about, yeah, there are all different kinds of ways. There, it reminds me of the Ministry of Silly Walks. There's all different sorts of ways to get, go across a room. Uh, some of them look like dancing. So who knows? Now, so the other, uh, now another thing here is people may be listening to this thinking, oh, well, Utah. I mean, of course, Utah, there's no dancing, Mormons, et cetera, et cetera. Well, wait a minute. It hasn't been that long since we had a story right out of New York City about something like this. So if you're just if you're looking down your nose saying, oh, well, you know, we live in urban areas, St. George. (laughs) Well, no, New York City has a cabaret license still, from what I understand. And if your venue does not have the cabaret license, you will also be prohibited from having dancing on your premises. So let's say you, you know, just own a restaurant or something like that and you want to clear the tables off of an area one night and have a dance party or a contest or something like that. Nope. Not Not if you don't have the cabaret license. Wow. And, of course, we know that dancing is forbidden in some places like the Jefferson Memorial. That's right. You'll get body slammed if you tried dancing there. It could happen. So, um, according to the the story, the rest of the event, the the music, rides, and golf, all allowed to continue. Mm. 
obviously it's completely uh, it's not about safety right this isn't about safety because they have bumper cars at this location that could be jarring you could be you know in the bumper car and hit someone and you know maybe get a little whiplash or something so there's some risk involved in doing some of these activities it doesn't seem like it's about safety does no it? so you might think okay the cops come they say no dancing you don't have a permit for that and then they leave right mm -hmm. no they, oh, they stayed. <laughs> they stayed and observed the event. Ridiculous. Says the owner of the club, quote, it was the strangest thing I've ever seen. One of them was taking video. Wow. Wow. So, <laughs> they are bored. Imagine. Like, is there, they're going to review the tape later. Was anyone dancing? That foot twitch, was, was he trying to dance there? Are there people in St. <laughs> George or anywhere in the world who actually think you should have to get a permit before having a dance party. <laughs> I really want to know. The toll-free number here is 855-450-FREE. You've got a little more of the story coming I do, yes. 855-450-3733. Whether you're in St. George or anywhere, would love to get your thoughts on this crazy story, but sadly, not the only one we've heard of on this very radio program. This is Free Talk Live. And is dancing evil? Like, why should dancing be prohibited? What's the deal there? It's Free Talk Live. Have you thought about owning gold? There are lots of reasons to own precious metals. A hedge against inflation. When the dollar tanks, metals go up. A barter currency. You can disempower the Fed by using real money. And no one knows the future. In an economic collapse, metals are likely to be a currency. Do as I've done for years. Buy your gold and silver and precious metals from Midas Resources through gold.freetalklive.com. That's gold.freetalklive.com. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at FreeRoss.org. That's FreeRoss.org. Hi, this is Mark Edge, host of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the very economic engine that powers this country, with a printing press tethered to Washington politicians, bureaucrats, and central bankers. How can we put our trust in paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Come see gold.freetalklive.com or call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold. With Washington, D.C. delivering more debt and printed promises, common sense tells us the future of the trend is obvious. Everyone listening should visit gold.freetalklive.com or call 877-357-9938. I trust Midas Resources for my gold, silver, platinum, and you can too. Again, I want you to have this book. And it's free. It's gold.freetalklive.com or 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. When you're coping with bad news and the news media come calling, and they will, don't clam up. As notorious political figures find out the hard way, the cover-up can be worse than the crime. So get out in front of unfavorable news about your company, your group, or organization, or yourself. The sooner you confront a negative story, the sooner it will be over. Responding as quickly to negative stories as you do to positive ones enhances your credibility. Hiding embarrassing information or lying will do more damage than damage control. Never stonewall. Tell your side of the story, use specifics, and detail what corrective action has already been taken. Respond in kind. If the issue is emotional, don't sound like a cold, unemotional Mr. Spock. For more tips on critical communication skills for the way things are now, hit survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. 
So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. Are you a political activist who does things that the government might not like? Then this free ebook may save your life. Rats is your guide to protecting yourself against snitches, informers, informants, agents provocateur, narcs, finks, and similar vermin. Rats was written by OG libertarian Claire Wolf. Rats is a short book, easy to read, and available free in many formats. Download Rats free at rats-nosnitch.com. That's rats-nosnitch.com. What's up next? Visit the Liberty Radio Network program guide to find out at shows.lrn.fm. That's shows.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and you can bring up anything you want. Our number is toll-free. It's brought to you by ProXPN, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We'll continue this crazy story, but not an unfamiliar story, uh, out of St. George, Utah. This could happen where you live. I don't know how many places have dancing permits. I suspect... We would be surprised to find out how many places have them because it's not just St. George, Utah. It's also New York City. So it doesn't have anything to do with the size of the population or how urban uh, a place is. It has to do with just these books, you know, these laws have probably been on the books for decades and they're still enforcing them. Uh, We'll continue the story out of St. George here. Your calls and thoughts are welcome, especially if you think that people do need permits to dance, that we need to put tight controls on this dancing nonsense. 855-450-FREE, 855-450-3733. Now, if you care about online privacy, you need to know about ProXPN. It's a global virtual private network, and they encrypt your data, meaning that your internet service provider will no longer know what you're doing. They're probably saving your surfing history right now, and you can stop that from happening by hooking up with ProXPN software. It's free. You just go download it. For Windows, Macintosh, iOS devices, Android devices, as well as uh, you can do a Linux uh, setup. It's a little bit different setting up the Linux. It's actually pretty easy to do with Linux as well. Go to proxpn.com slash FTL. Get started there. And then when you're ready to upgrade to their premium account to get unlimited bandwidth, servers around the world you can access, you can privately torrent and get past regionally blocked websites, you'll want to upgrade with code FTL50 to save yourself 50% off of the annual account. That brings the price down to just about $5 per month, and you get that savings for the lifetime of the account. You can save even more by paying with Bitcoin on the annual account and using code FTLBTC. That's FTL like Free Talk Live and BTC, and you get 62% off the price of the annual account that way. You get it all with a risk-free 7-day money-back guarantee and Pro XPN doesn't keep records of your online habits at all. So go to proxpn.com slash FTL and use code FTL50 or FTLBTC and get a great discount on privacy. That is priceless. The story is out of St. George, and Derek J., you got it uh, from St. George, was it stgeorge.com? St. George, Utah. I'm being terrible about these microphones. StGeorgeUtah.com. So uh, that's, I believe, a local uh, news outlet there that's reporting on this, not the city itself. Correct. Uh, The city gang has come down on a local fun center, one of those places that, you know, they've got some arcade machines, they've got some mini golf, uh, bumper cars, that kind of thing. Somebody was trying to throw a party there, and the, the blue light gang shows up but apparently before the party even started with a video camera and multiple officers telling these people who are trying to just have a fun family style party like a monster mash party telling these people you shan't be having dancing even though you thought you had a permit for dancing you don't have a permit for dancing yep completely not allowed apparently sometime after the police arrived St. George police captain identified as Captain Scott Staley arrived with an absolutely new packet that said no dancing in mm. pen. 
So it was written, <laughs> just added to their permit. Like, oh, you forgot these extra papers. We didn't include these. So crazy. I know there's more from the story, but I want to jump to uh, some of our listeners because we are live in St. George on KZNU um, basically seven nights a week, which is awesome. So welcome, uh, Jeremy, listening in St. George. Uh, you're on Free Talk Live. Jeremy. Yeah, this is such a bizarre and embarrassing story for my hometown, <laughs> uh, especially in a hometown where we kind of pride ourselves on being, you know, uh, uh, I guess you could say anti-government, not really that, but, you know, uh, live and let live kind of kind of place. And uh, as an aside, I am Mormon, and I actually met my wife uh, at a dance club here in town. So, oh, okay, so Mormons like, do not prohibit dance. Mormons do not prohibit dancing? No, no, we don't. Okay, but, that's good. Uh, the, the other strange thing about this story is you said it was uh, Heart of Dixie, the organization that put the fundraiser on, right? Correct. And what's bizarre about that is Heart of Dixie and the city have collaborated um, in the recent past. I mean, we're talking about like Fourth of July type activities. Uh, we have a local one called Pioneer Day. We celebrate kind of the founding of Utah, so that's like a a state holiday. I mean, they collaborated on, on various things throughout the summer for fundraisers uh, that benefited the city and this organization. I just, I, I didn't go, so I can't, I don't, I can't speak to the details, but it's just so strange. So How did you first you hear about it? Uh, from you guys. <laughs> so uh, just to be clear then, this is the people who worship not uh, any particular deity who are pushing this, except for those who worship the state. These are state worshiping people who, for whatever reason, believe that dancing needs to be permitted, and apparently they won't permit anybody for the dancing because these people thought they had the permit to dance. Turns out the police showed them an alternate version of their permit that had no dancing and handwriting written on it. I mean, what? I mean, it's just so bizarre. I'm almost at a loss for words that this is 2014 and this is happening today. It's so tragic. I agree. I can't even begin to explain it. Like I say, it's not like we're anti-dancing. Well, uh, I think there needs to be, to be a dance tension. party thrown at the city council chambers, uh, personally. that's <laughs> I, You know, if this were Keene, New Hampshire, I think that's how we would handle something like this. I thank you for the call, it Jeremy. Wasn't even, Go ahead. It wasn't even like the, uh, the facility, a Fiesta Fund, is anywhere near a residential area, the nearest residential <laughs> well, area. Well, remember, they were hundred yards away. I don't know if you heard the beginning portion of the story, but they had music. It was okay to have music. They were uh, totally okay with music pounding in the dance, you know, the in the center, not the dance party, but in the you know this place where this was happening. The party was happening, so the party was allowed to happen. The music was allowed to play. So this didn't even have anything to do with a complaint coming from the community, uh, because no one, first of all, would be able to see inside to see if there was any dancing going on unless they were already in the uh, the facility and secondly you wouldn't have been able to hear the music from the outside either thanks jeremy for the call tonight the toll-free number is 855 450 free so the party was allowed the bumper cars the video games the you know whatever other amenities that this place offered just no dancing. Just be careful how you cross that ballroom when that music's playing. <laughs> well, yeah, right. You've got it, a camera on so, you. I mean, so, it would really put a lot of pressure. That would ruin the event. You know, so, for me, if I see cops with a camera in a dance party that I wanted to be at and they're announcing no dancing, I'm gone. I mean, well, I'm not staying there. It brings me to another question is who's responsible for the dancing? If you decide to just break out into a dance in the middle of this party where there's oh. no permit, do they fine you? Do they find the party organizer? Do they find the event owner or the uh, the venue owner? Who's responsible for the swaying of bodies in a given space? Yeah, one of your people was dancing. The toll, now you're under arrest. The toll-free number is 855-453-MARKS Mark's in St. George. You're on Free Talk Live. Go, Mark. Hi. Um, yeah, I, I just want to make a comment on what you've been saying. And um, to answer a couple of your questions, the way it works as far as the ticketing goes is it's the business that gets ticketed. Sad. Up until oh. 2000, yes, it's it's up until 2004, public dancing by any individual was actually a ticketable offense. And they repealed <laughs> that rule and replaced it essentially with this permit system. And oh kind of what I called in... Hang yeah, on, hang on, Mark. In. We're going to bring you back. Whatever you called in about, we'll get to it here. Stand by. 855-450-FREE. That is the Pro XPN toll-free line. 
This is ripe for civil disobedience, in my opinion. It's Free Talk Live. With autumn in the air, it's time to think about getting ready for winter. And it's time to save at HerbalHealer.com. You'll find amazing seasonal savings to prepare you for the fight against cold and flu season. Like Oregacillin to promote lung health. 30 capsules, regularly $34.95, now only $25. HHA Olive Leaf, the natural antiviral, normally $16.95, now 60 capsules are just $12. HHA Elderberry Power, a great flu and virus fighter, regularly $16.95, 60 capsules, now $10. Save in all our homeopathic detoxes. Choose from lungs, kidney, liver, brain, libido, or whole body, normally $26.95, now just $20. Visit HerbalHealer.com and click on the Fall Winter Specials button to save on all our natural cold and flu fighting products. Also explore our Herbal Healer Academy correspondence courses that teach you how to handle your health naturally. HerbalHealer.com, healing the world with nature, one person at a time, since 1988. Free Talk Live. For me, it's, um, it's, it's, it's fighting negativity, and the negativity is my thoughts in my head that are negative. And I had to re learn to recognize when my thoughts were being negative because most of my life, my, most of my thoughts were negative. Mm -hmm. So I had, to, I had to become aware of when they were happening. And when I, and when now, when I become aware of, of these negative thoughts of pervading my, 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 my thinking, um, I, I immediately fight them with positive thoughts. And most of the positive thoughts that I feed myself are positive reaffirmations about who I am, where I'm going, where I've come from. Uh, whenever I find myself thinking negatively, I, I don't consider it fighting the negative thoughts. I just consider it changing my train of thought. I just kind of change tracks to a positive thought and just focus on that. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate, well, I know a guy who's really great. It's the realtor Mark Warden. Do you want a home with 20 acres, a lakeside cabin, any takers for renters, buyers, and sellers too? Mark Warden is the guy for you. PorcupineRealEstate.com. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. This alert just came in. This special announcement is for business owners and leaders of organizations who've been waiting for the right time to build. General Steel has made it impossible to wait any longer with rock bottom prices that could save you thousands. That's right, General Steel, America's leader in pre-engineered structures, is offering buildings at prices you will never see again. Don't miss these prices, a 50 by 100 for under $30,000. You heard right, that's 5,000 square feet under $30,000. Many if you need a larger building, try a 100 by 100 commercial building for $129,000. You can't afford to rent with these prices. Imagine a 70 by 100 foot church building for under $69,000. With the economy improving and interest rates still at historic lows, you can't afford to wait. Call 800-917-8251. 800-917-8251. 800-917-8251. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. Dial toll-free and bring up anything you want. Though we are talking about dancing being forbidden, or at least until you get yourself your government permission slip in the town of St. George, Utah, where we are live on uh, KZNU. So we've actually got uh, the you know this cool 
you know, live radio action of people calling in. We've actually got a lady on the line saying she was there when the cops came to uh, to threaten the dance party. I definitely want to talk to her. So uh, hang on. We're going to get to you. want to get all your thoughts out here about this because you thought this was over in the 1980s with Footloose. No, no, no. It's still going on here today in 2014. And it's not just St. George. It's, it's a lot of places, from what I understand, around the country. Let's go back to your phone calls and thoughts uh, we do have more, by the way, from the story to share with you. Derek J. brought that in here tonight, Free Talk Live. Uh, you can also reach us on Skype. Our Skype username here is lrn.fm. Let's go back to, I believe we had uh, Jeff with us here. Jeff, uh, excuse me, not Jeff. We had Mark with us. Mark, you're back here uh, listening to KZNU. Uh, do continue. Okay, thanks. Um, yeah, what I was going to call in to say is um, St. George, I've only lived here for about two years, but St. George is kind of a town that's going through a transition. It's maybe like a existential crisis of the town, you might say. It's it's typically been a very uh, shielded kind of enclave. There's a lot of Mormons here, but it's also a very conservative hub mm-hmm. of the West. It's very anti-federal government, stuff like that. But the town of St. George itself has always been kind of controlled by the much older generation. And now the town, the college here just became a university recently. It's also become kind of an outdoor mecca with so many national parks in the area and that type of stuff. So Hmm. there's kind of these two competing factions of the town that have started to kind of come head to head. In the three main newspapers here, you can see these kind of things battled out constantly in in these different newspapers with this more pro-business kind of conservative element. But then at the same time, they will a lot of times use a heavy hand on stuff like this that they feel is outside kind of uh, maybe traditional value type things. Mm. And so it's kind of made for this interesting play of stuff. And then you... um, talked about how you thought this was right for civil disobedience. That was This issue came up during Mitt Romney's candidacy with the whole Footloose thing and him being a Mormon and everything, even though he doesn't live in Utah. But um, And the problem that I kind of see with it is I would be more than willing to get ticketed to see if I could take this higher as a personal person, but they've kind of put all of the responsibility on the business where this Mm -hmm. happens. So if I dance on the street, I will not get in trouble for that. But if I dance in a business that has music going, they actually will be the ones that tell me to stop because they're the ones that are going to have to suffer the ticket and or the, you know, closing down of their establishment, whatever it is. So in order for this to kind of be a civil disobedience situation, there'd have to be a business that would be willing to take this on, which is always more. It's sad. It's sad that, that, you know, it's, it's smart on the government's part to do it that way because it means that they can use the business owner as sort of the choke point. Uh, And of course, the business owner has invested thousands of dollars or hundreds of thousands of dollars uh, in their business. This facility um, is not a small place from the photo that I saw of this. uh, What was it? The family fun? What's it called again? Fiesta fun. Fiesta fun. Uh, Fiesta Fun out there in St. George looks like a fairly big facility. I mean, this was not a cheap place to uh, get started. And most business owners didn't get into business to put their business on the line to make a stand for freedom. Unfortunately, I wish more business owners would, because if business owners would actually stand up for freedom, then we wouldn't have as much stupid business regulation as we do today, because the the problem is that business owners, well, since they just want to go along to get along, that's what they do, and every new dumb regulation that comes out that costs them time and money, they jump through the hoop rather than say, no, that's ridiculous, I'm not going to obey this, this is not helping my customers, It's not helping my business. It's not keeping anyone safe. It's just extracting money and obedience from me, and I'm not going to do that in order to run my business. If business owners would actually make a stand, I think it could be really, really powerful. Every now and then, one of them does, and we like to focus on those folks when they do here on Free Talk Live. And inevitably, they are usually cut down. I mean, they're usually – they usually – aren't successful and ultimately will end up paying the fine or, you know, losing in court. And uh, it's it's tragic, but it's the obedience, I think, that that keeps encouraging this behavior. Mark, any other thoughts you want to share tonight? No, that was it. Thanks. Thanks for the call. Marisa is with us listening in St. George. You say you were there on the night in question when police showed up at uh, the Fiesta Fun party location and told them no dancing allowed. Can you give us more information? Yeah, definitely. I was there, and we were actually just about to go in there, and somebody came out, and they're like, oh, they're shutting it down. And we're like, what? We could hear music. We, you know, saw people on the go-karts. We're like, what do you mean they're shutting it down? 
And that's when we found out that they wouldn't allow dancing. And I was thinking, well, they have this loud music going, you know. There, there's people leaving by, like, the dozens. There's a huh. crowd of people leaving because they're not allowed to dance at this famously known for Heart of Dixie is the dancing, you know. that That's where you can go. You know, we don't have really a very big club scene here, and... I'm not talking about a crazy drinking. This is an 18 and up party. You know, there's there's not alcohol and everything being introduced there. Mm-hmm. It's Do they even serve for, alcohol at uh, the Fiesta Fun? Not at all. Mm-hmm. This is a kid's, a kid's place. Of course, they're not going to serve alcohol there. And it's just it was just ridiculous to me that they're saying, no, you can't dance. So we can have this loud music and we can turn all these people away and... Can, it was just ridiculous. Can you help me understand what could possibly be the motive of the police who showed up to en- enforce this? You know, what are they trying to protect? What are they doing? Honestly, what all I can think, I'm from a big city. I'm from Houston, Texas. I am used to this, you know, a bigger social scene. I think they're bored. I think they don't have a lot of parties to break they up. They should come or... out and dance. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. There's do you think they wanted party to party poopers. Do you think they wanted to arrest someone that night? I don't necessarily think they wanted to arrest anyone because like you said, the permit was for the business. They're not, I mean, I would love to get a ticket that says you were dancing in a public place. Here's your ticket. I, you know, I hang that on my wall. But I, I don't think they were out. Did to you decide arrest. to not go in as a result of hearing? Because you were just coming up as you heard that they had prohibited dancing in this location. Uh, did that affect your decision? Yeah, we we didn't even go in. We because that's that's why we wanted to go. All mm-hmm. the Heart of Dixie dancers have been amazing and so much fun, such good music and fun people. And yeah, it totally just turned us away from even going. I had pre-ordered tickets and I still didn't even want to go. Marisa, thanks for sharing uh, your story tonight. I appreciate hearing from you. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We still have yet to hear from anyone who supports the prohibition on dancing without a permit. Uh, Mark is now joining us here on microphone number two. You were at a fireman's meeting tonight, so welcome to the show. Better late than never. It's pretty obvious that if you allow people to dance without a permit, you're going to have chaos. I mean, <laughs> babies being born out of wedlock, well, dogs again, and cats living together. What defines dancing? Is it tapping one's toe? Is it swaying one's hips? Is it a combination of more than one action? If you're walking across the room and you sashay a little bit as you're walking, uh, does that count as dancing? And also, you know, think about this from the perspective of how frustrating this must be for the business owner because the the police they're not supposedly enforcing the actual no dance thing on the individuals they'll just look around and if they see someone dancing they'll write a ticket to the business owner that's what we've been told is what the how the ordinance is written there so in order to stop people from dancing in this business this place of business where there's music playing which, of course, is naturally going to cont- uh, to encourage people to dance, then the business owner would then have to employ his bodyguards or, you know, security group. And I don't imagine there's too many people that are of a, sort of the bouncer beefcake security group at the family fun zone, but maybe on this night they had a few security agents. Then you've got to send your security goons around to act like goons. I mean, they would normally be there to help your customers, but now they have to do the government's bidding on your behalf and put a stop to anyone who's dancing. Can you imagine there's like grabbing a small child and forcing them to stop dancing? I mean, this could go so crazy. It already has. Free Talk Live. Pop quiz, kid. You know it's at 3221 Highway 22? The new Dickinson Granger branch. You know it was there before that? Who cares? There's a Granger branch there now. Granger's got everything we need, from inventory management to safety services and solutions. They even have this handy mobile app for easy browsing on the go. Let's head over there and stock up. There's nothing I love more than a new Granger branch, kid, including you. Get it? Got it? Good. Call clickgranger.com slash oil and gas or stop by. Granger, for the ones who get it done. Majid lives in Nord Devin, Armenia with his wife, kids, and grandkids all in the same house. They have cows, but to compete against the big ranchers, Majid needed to get a loan for more cattle. 
Free Talk Live helped him get a loan for the cows. He bought them, and now he's very happy with the expansion of his farm. You can help us help more people by getting your coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com. Make a difference, one cup at a time. Get a free pound to try out the subscription. Cancel at any time. Coffee.freetalklive.com. The experts at web.com want to build your business a successful website for free, just like we did for these current web.com customers. We've used and, and looked at other website designers, but there's nobody better than web.com. Web.com can build your website in as little as seven days free. Plus, we'll promote it on all the major search engines like Google, Yahoo, and Bing. If after 30 days you're happy, we'll continue to provide promotion, hosting, support, and maintenance, all for one low monthly fee. If not, cancel and pay nothing. If you're in business today and you don't have a web presence, you won't be taken seriously. Call right now and you'll also get a free .com or .net domain name for your new website powered by VeriSign, the world's leading domain name provider. Call 800-297-0154. That's 800-297-0154. No upfront charge for site build, after which ongoing fees apply. Rights to site are relinquished when canceled. Domain included during active service, after which fees apply. That's 800-297-0154. Free Press Publications is an independent, alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary on the website fpp.cc, as well as a daily five-minute newscast, FPP Radio News, and weekly news, views, and commentary in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com, and the monthly newspaper, FPP News at news.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at FPP.cc. That's FPP.cc, as in Creative Commons. The three most important things you can do, Free Talk Live, are one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. Are you tired of governments around the world killing innocent people? Stop using their money. There is an alternative. Bitcoin is a stateless, free market, non-political currency. Bitcoin is money that cannot be inflated or controlled by any state. By continuing to use their money, you're perpetuating the killing. Stop doing it. You have an incredible alternative available to you now. Learn it, use it, spread it. Get started with Bitcoin at WeUseCoins.com. It's WeUseCoins.com. You can watch the LRN Studio Cam and chat with other listeners anytime at cam.lrn.fm. That's cam.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. We invite you here to take control of the airwaves at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. The government of St. George, Utah, cracked down on a party I don't know if it was this weekend, but it seemed like it was fairly recent when this was happening. A Monster Mash get-together at a local Fiesta Fun Zone kind of family gathering place with, you know, kind of the arcade games and the bumper boats or bumper cars. Those really cool multicolored tunnels that are like up in the ceiling where you can, you know, like they lead from the ball pit up into the ceiling and you just kind of go around in them and stuff like wow, that. Wow, that sounds pretty cool. Yeah, like these playgrounds are far better than the crap that we had when we were kids. So um, anyway, so they broke up this party that was, they thought they had a permit and Derek J has more from the story. Uh, they thought they had a permit for dancing. Turns out the police showed up, showed them some other paperwork that said in that wrote in handwriting. Uh, someone had written no dancing, and it was announced over the intercom in the uh, the facility. All of the people who were in the place were told they were not allowed to dance. Music was playing, however, uh, just no dancing allowed. So everything else was fine with the party. 
you know, the bumper cars, the music, the arcade, whatever else was going on in there. Totally fine. Totally fine to have a gathering and a party, but dancing? That needs to be permitted. We need to make sure everybody's safe. I don't. What, what the hell's the reason for dancing? What? <laughs> for permits? For dancing? Where does this come from? What What era is this from? Is this from the Victorian <laughs> era? I mean, what? what what? I don't know. And 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 who? The only thing I can figure is Baptists. I mean, that's all that comes to mind when I hear this. <laughs> it's just so crazy, and I just wish we did have a business owner who would tell the police to go screw off because you know it's my business, it's my property. If I want to play, I'm not disturbing the neighbors. The issue isn't sound. Uh, you know, there's it's no got to be mortifying here. as a as a, as a law enforcement officer to walk into a business with a with a bunch of kids um, and say, "Look, um, I was sent down here by the chief." Those uh, cops could have said no. To, to, they could have said no. We're not doing that. That's to crazy. The, to the chief, sure. They have discretion. I mean, six of them. Why do there, there need were to be six? six? Yes, it's practically there a SWAT were, raid. There were six <laughs> police officers there. One of That's them a, with a video camera. I think they had nothing else to do. Oh, I would agree with you on that. That's what I'm saying is mortifying here. I mean, imagine you went to you went to school for this. You know, you're out there to catch. Cri- it's called criminal justice is your degree, and this is what they have you doing: videotaping seven year olds be bopping around at the, the fun center. Well, they, Are you kidding me? They better not be be bopping around. <laughs> it's nuts. So, um, yeah, I, I wish we had more business owners who would be willing to just refuse to do this and then go to court. I want to see the court case where there's a business owner who's refusing to enforce, and then you've got some cops going and testifying about how they witnessed kids dancing and that, that you know they told the owner to put a stop to it and the owner refused to stop it. I mean, can you imagine having to send security over to some kids and tr- intimidate them into not dancing so you can avoid a fine? That's what this guy would have to do in order to uh, to prevent himself from being issued some sort of a summons by the police. Would they take him out in handcuffs while they were at it? I mean, this is crazy. They do it if they were told to, apparently. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Derek J., do you have more from the story that you want to share? Yes. All right, let's do Carly that. Jarvis, remember, she's one of the security people with uh, Heart of Dixie, this group that put on the event. Okay. And she said the original permit had apparently been amended. As we mentioned, some chief came down with his piece of paper and said, oh, you forgot this part. <laughs> said, no dancing. In written in pen. Well, initial int- attendance at the time of the police officer's arrival was estimated around 400 people. Wow, that's a big party. Though Jarvis, this uh, security uh, girl with Heart of Dixies, estimated that it may have been more than twice that. The event mm. itself was quite controlled, she said, with security provided both by Heart of Dixie and Fiesta Fun. Quote, mm. we had, I would say, at least 20 security guards. Okay. It is not about safety here. Nope. Due to the cancellation of the uh, dance party, news apparently spread by attendees to friends, got out, and the Monster Mash didn't draw as much of a crowd as it had it hoped. Crockett, remember, he's the owner of Fiesta Fun. It's, he's, yeah. Can you imagine, like, would you want to take your kids to the to the event that the cops are going to bust? I mean, this is, right. is going to ruin a guy's business. Well, he said they made about 20% of what they anticipated. Oh, oh yeah. God. As for attendees, and someone let's, had let's refunds. Let's point out the chilling effect that government has, government regulation right. has on businesses. Who's going to want to throw a party in St. George after this? Right. And, 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 you know, there's plenty of people listening that say, oh, we need regulation. Look, I'm not saying that you don't need some kind of standards by which you do something. But consider for a second that when you say we need regulation, these are the regulations you're talking about amongst all the rest. This is a regulation on how to go about doing business. There's, so, I mean, there's myriad of these. And we have no clue what they all are. You assume that a regulation makes sense. I present you, ladies and gentlemen, Exhibit A. Well, these attendees weren't happy with the Mm -hmm. regulations. They left. Some wanted refunds. And as for the appearance of six officers on the scene, those involved in the incident said it felt a bit heavy-handed on the police's part. That it did, yeah. I wonder what would have happened if... At the front door to this event, the security agents were to turn away the police 
If the Ooh. police, if the police were to come up to the front door, they bring of the their event, bearcat and they'd come on it. They, they, they're well, coming in. Excuse me, officer. You are going to have to get a warrant if you're going to want to search this party. Oh, that would be nice. Yeah. I don't know if you can do that in a business. It's not really about warrants. Oh it, yeah. Once you, you open your know. business, open your doors up to the world, then essentially they feel like they own you. Well, no, that's not true because there was that coffee shop in uh, Washington that the said no black. police officers allowed. You know, they're open to the public, but except they, police. But they turned down business from a police officer. That's a different, um, sort of different. That's a good it point. It wasn't that the, yeah. the police officer couldn't come in. It's that they were turning down his business. Look, hmm. we don't want to give you a sandwich and a coffee. Right. Well, it is different, and there is more about the dispute. This did just happen two days ago, but already the heart of Dixie issued a statement. Hold on. We'll get to the statement here in moments. You can bring up anything. We've got Bill in New York. You're on Free Talk Live. Hey, Bill. Um, so I wanted to talk about home ownership and debt in America because I'm at a crossroads in my life right now. And I just, I know this isn't a financial advice show. I've been listening to you guys for a long time, but I feel like perhaps I can get some wisdom out of you guys as well as the listeners if anyone wants to chime in. Well, a couple of us here have owned a home or two. So, uh, sure, go ahead. So I have been obsessed with the thought of owning a home since I was really young. Uh, I'm 28 years old. I have a significant amount of money saved up, and I'm going to be married next year. Hmm. Um, I have some student loan debt, but I have the ability to pay it all off right now if I wanted to. What's the interest rate? It, oh, I don't know. It's really low, I think. I don't know what the interest rate is, to okay. be honest. But I mean, all of my loans are, they're federal loans, so they're... Can you get me close? Two, so three, low. four, five percent? Probably less than five percent. Okay. Um. So I could pay them all off right now if I wanted to. But I know that, you know, you buy a home, you want to throw down at least 20% um, so that you can get the actual house. Mm -hmm. And I've been thinking about this, and I'm thinking that I don't actually know if I really want to own a house. I feel like next year when I move in with my wife, you know, we could either rent or own. Renting, I feel like, is throwing money down the drain. But at the moment, I'm trying to sell my late mother's home. And I just see so many headaches in terms of owning a home. You're, first of all, let's say I were to own a home with my wife. You're locked into this one property. Um, you're at the behest of your neighbors in terms of them not foreclosing on their own. If one of them does, then you're, the value of your home just like absolutely plummets. Um, taxes are sky high in my area in New York. And if I were to move to New Jersey or Connecticut, um, it's it's not that much better there either. Um, I'm not interested in moving to New Hampshire. How far is you know, so, Ian was rubbing his hands? Um, <laughs> how far are you from your mother's house? Why wouldn't you live in that? Uh, I am. Well, right now I'm in an apartment, uh -huh. um, but I'm 15 minutes away from her house. I have no interest in living here. Okay. So, in, you, in selling you, her home, I'm seeing the headaches of homeownership. Okay. So, mm -hmm. do you have a giant a dog? No, no. Do dog. you want a giant dog? I hate owning animals. Do, I'm are you as handy? An uncle. How many tools do you have? Do you have lots of tools? Uh, I have a Phillips head and. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so, so you don't have dreams of sort of handyman stuff. You don't want a woodworking shop or something, right? No, I don't. But what I do have dreams of is having my own house and cutting the lawn and having. Oh, you know, God, lawns are terrible. Don't you worry. Own, Somebody will let you, know? you cut their lawn for you. Um, you can do that for free. You don't need to take <laughs> on that huge debt. Um, okay, so uh, do you gar Do you want a garden? Do you want to grow your I own food? I do want a garden. Okay. I want a garden. I want to have a tomato bush and that whole thing. Okay. Um some landlords will let you plant a tomato. Bush. Well, it, it, you could probably rent a house and have you know some topsy turvies hanging from the, uh, the the front of the bungalow if that's what you wanted. Stand to by, do. Bill. I, I, I suspect I Mark that, has. But... Hang up. Hang up. I suspect Mark has some more advice for you or some advice coming up. And your thoughts are welcome as well. You can talk to Bill or uh, share anything. Free talk live. Little Jack Horner sat in a corner of his ransacked apartment, wondering what kind of nitwit steals a futon. Luckily, the Geico Insurance Agency had helped him with renter's insurance, and he got full replacement. Unfortunately, little Jack Horner had to have his stomach pumped when he ate a six-month-old Christmas pie. Visit geico.com to see how affordable renter's insurance can be. 
talk radio generally and Free Talk Live specifically are a really inexpensive way to reach customers. All advertising is about return on investment. If you keep your investment low, you have a better chance of seeing a proper return. Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations and the internet, reaching hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business, project, website, or idea. Email me, Mark, at freetalklive.com. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Monday, October 27th, 2014. Silver is trading at $17.20 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,231 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $357. Antiwar.com reports the ouster of the Islamic State from Jerf al sakar just south of Baghdad, was much less of the liberation that officials presented it as, and rather another sectarian conquest with the Shiite militias pushing into the overwhelmingly Sunni town. We've heard that story a few times already, and what came next should surprise nobody as militias captured punitive the Islamic State members and carried out summary executions in broad daylight. One of the militia leaders noted, these dogs are Chechens, they don't deserve to stay alive, we took confessions from them and we don't need them anymore. The sectarian underpinnings of the war have loomed large over battles for many towns with Sunni locals not necessarily pro the Islamic State, but seeing remaining under their rule as far safer than being under the Iraqi fold and a rule by militia. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Roberts and Roberts Brokerage. For over 35 years, Roberts and Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment grade precious metals. They now take Bitcoin for purchasing precious metals so you can turn your profits into a long term investment. Call Roberts and Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing. 800 874 9760. The AP reports Ukrainians overwhelmingly backed several pro-Western parties in a landmark parliamentary election on Sunday, another nudge in the former Soviet Republic's drift away from Russia. Two exit polls released as voting close indicated that President Petro Poroshenko's party will secure a narrow win in the parliamentary election, falling short of an outright majority. Prime Minister Arseniy Yatsenyuk's popular front followed close behind. Although they lead rival parties, Poroshenko and Yatsenyuk share pro-Western sentiments and have campaigned on reform agendas aimed at pulling Ukraine back from the brink of economic ruin. The parties are expected to join forces with other reform-oriented groups to form a broad pro-European coalition. Talking to supporters at his party headquarters, Poroshenko said coalition talks will start today and will last no longer than 10 days. Almost 3 million people were unable to vote in eastern regions, still gripped with unrest as government troops can continue to wage almost daily battles against separatists. The vote on Sunday will substantially overhaul a legislature once dominated by loyalist of ousted former president Viktor Yanukovych. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Coinbase. Coinbase is a simple and secure online Bitcoin wallet for sending, receiving, and storing Bitcoin. Get started at coinbase.fppradio.com. That's coinbase.fppradio.com. 
The BBC reports protesters in Hong Kong have abandoned plans to hold a ballot over whether to accept several government concessions. Protest leaders said they decided to adjourn the vote after disagreement over its format and apologized for a lack of discussion with the protesters. The vote was to be held electronically and was canceled just four hours before it was supposed to start. Last Tuesday, student protest leaders and government officials held talks for the first time but made little progress towards ending the impact. The government offered to send a report to Chinese government officials reflecting the protesters' views and set up a platform to facilitate dialogue on future constitutional changes. Protest leaders initially rejected the government's offer before pledging on Friday to hold the now-canceled vote. Benny Tai, one of the founders of the Occupy Central protest group, said, We feel we have been conducting the vote hastily. We decided to adjourn the vote at the square, but it doesn't mean that the movement has stopped. In a statement, Occupy Central said, We apologize to the public for the lack of discussion among the participants before making the previous decision. Though numbers have fallen significantly since the early days of the protest, a hardcore of demonstrators, mostly students, have said they will not give up their occupation of central areas until China changes its mind on the rules for Hong Kong's 2017 election. The Chinese government has ruled that candidates for the chief executive election must be vetted by a nominating committee dominated by pro-Beijing groups. The protesters say they should be allowed a wholly free choice of candidates. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. We have a breaking news blast on the tragic situation happening across the country in which more than 40,000 Americans have been trapped in a Confessions animal hoarding marathon on Animal Planet for the last 13 hours. The Animal Hoarders Marathon began at 9 this morning as victims were preparing for a full day before hearing the fateful sound of the show's opening credits. Almost instantly, thousands were pinned to their couches by a story of a heavyset homosexual living with his partner, his toothless sister, and 31 chihuahuas. Rescue workers rushed to free as many victims as they could. The rope's secure? Rope's secure. We're gonna get you out of here. Just hold on a second, ma'am. Wait, I think the next one is about monkeys. Ready? Ready! Pull! No, no, wait, wait. Can I just see what happens with the feral cat? In other parts of the country, rescue workers enlisted volunteers who had already seen the episodes to spoil them for the victims. Oh yeah, this one. This is about the lady living with the dogs in the trailer. She doesn't even get evicted in the end. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up anything you want. More dance party madness coming up here in moments with the town of St. George, Utah. I guess it's actually a city. It's 70,000 some people that live in St. George. Uh, the city of St. George shutting down basically a dance party that uh, they thought they had a permit for dancing, but turns out they didn't. City decided that uh, no dancing will be allowed at this party, and they shut it down just uh, before it even really got going. Uh, and it was sort of like like a, a family uh, dance, kind of like a family fun center kind of thing. So there's more to that story. Derek J is going to be bringing that to us here in a moment. But we'll also take your calls about anything here on Free Talk Live. Now, Bill is in White Plains, New York, and he had some questions about being a homeowner. He's sort of had this fantasy of owning his own home, but now that he's in the process of helping his mother sell her home, uh, he's realizing that there's some things about home ownership that maybe he didn't really uh, understand. He's really kind of getting a better grasp on this and is sort of asking for some opinions from the hosts of Free Talk Live. Two of, uh, of the three hosts here have had owned homes in the past and or currently own a home. So, you know, we know a thing or two about this. And, Mark, you were asking Bill a series of questions about, you know, does he want to do home repair? Does he want to do work, uh, you know, woodworking and things, you know, like that? Where were you going with that? And do you have more questions for Bill? Yeah. I, I've, I, so I asked about gardening and you said you wanted to grow a few p tomato plants. Is this something you want to grow into something more? Like you want a big garden or you just want a few tomato plants? You know, I think I just I, I, I bought into this whole, uh, you know, Brady Bunch American dream type of thing sure. where you start a family, you own a home, you know, you, you do whatever you want to your piece of property because that's what everyone wants. There's some really cool and, things uh, about owning a house. I'm not going to claim that there there isn't, but it's a there's a cost to it. Of course there are. Yeah. Yeah, no, there's a cost. There's maintaining it. There's also, you know, as I mentioned before, you know, 
What I'm struggling with right now is one of our neighbors, a couple of our neighbors have foreclosed on their properties. And so that drives down the prices of all the homes in the area. Yeah. Well, um, which could be good if you're looking to buy. Um, of course. Yeah. So you know, one I'm of the things. I'm sell this thing. And so if I own a home, I don't want to have to, you know, wonder whether or not my neighbors are going to be re- as responsible with their money as I've been. And, you know, I'm only 28 years old right now and I only have student loans, but I have zero credit card debt and a significant amount of money saved. And so. You know, I'm really struggling as to whether this is a risk that I want to take, um, and I just I don't know what I, to do. I think uh, this is my opinion. Having owned, God, uh, close to a dozen uh, structures, people would call houses. <laughs> um, you know, just I didn't live in them all um, every time, but I, I, you know, I think that. There was a time when buying a house was a really good idea. If you bought a house in 1999 and you sold that house in 2005. Things looked pretty good, especially if you lived in one of the metros that prices really went up in. It made a lot of sense to own a house at that time. But if you bought your house in 2005 and tried to sell it in 2008, things didn't make nearly as much sense then. Uh, now, the I, you can't move thing, I think that's uh, it's a little fallacious, right? Like when, when you sign a lease, you can only move once every year if you have a year's lease. So uh, that particular reason for owning a home I don't, or not owning a home is, I, I don't think, particularly valuable. But I would only so own a home this, if there though. What's let that? Let me say this, though. Okay, so let's say I own a home and I'm ready to move for whatever reason. Yep. You're either going to probably take a hit on your property unless you're willing to stick it out until you get a price that you're willing to sell for. Right. Yeah, and it sucks unless to you're manage stay, a house At least remotely. when you're renting, you, okay, you're there for a year at a time, you know, you're in six, eight months, and you're like, eh, I don't want to live here anymore. Or you're there for two years, and you decide, you know what, I don't want to live here anymore. You can just walk away from that property, and all you're out is the cost of moving. Right. Yeah. With closing costs, essential, the way things are right now, uh, you're only going to really start making any kind of money to, to even speak of by owning at like the 10 year mark. So that's why I'm saying is, is what you need to do is you need to decide if there's some reason that you need property. Do you have a home audio studio where you can't really be n- near other people, in which case you could still sort of set that up in a rental. You can hang, um, you know, you can have a rent, you can rent a house instead of renting apartment. You can hang topsy-turvy uh, tomato plant growers on the front porch of a rental as opposed to the front porch of, uh, you know, a home. And I think that personally looking at this, I believe I've bought my last house unless you mm. see something that occurs uh, like what happened in you know the the housing boom. You feel like you would rent if you moved from from this point forward? Pretty much because mm. there's just been too many times in my life when I'm trying to fix something, I'm wielding a hammer, I'm preparing to beat whatever it is into a you know some kind of metal uh, recyclable slag because I'm so angry at what I'm having to do. you know and mm. I'd love to just be able to hand that off to somebody else. Hey, you know what? This is your problem, not mm. mine. And it's uh, especially, you know, people talk to me about buying a house or building a house. And I having done this one time, I'm like, look, if you want to build a house, I've got a little pra- a little little uh, setup I want you to do first. Go to the bank, get a $10,000 out in cash. Undo all the wrappers, put them in a pile in your lawn, pour gasoline over them, set them on fire. Now, I want you to understand that feeling of watching 10,000 of your dollars go up in flames because this is what I feel you've bought yourself by just considering buying a house. <laughs> now, now imagine that it's 10 times the pile's 10 times as large and now you have some concept of what it's like to build a house. Building a house is a ridiculously nonsensical argument. Well, just to clarify, were you talking about buying a home oh, he's or talking building about buying. a home? Bill. Uh, me? Yeah, Bill. I was I was talking really about buying a home. Yeah. So, yeah, if you're going to own a home, that seems to be the buy, way to go. It's just buy yeah. an existing structure. You don't have to deal with the hassles of contractors and them falling through on their promises and permitting and all of that nonsense. There's yeah. a whole nightmare Make sure you get a good inspector building. if you're going to buy because this is the most important part. You know, a lot, of t- a lot of times people are moving out because there's something wrong with the house. I would say if you are even uncertain, if you're uncertain at all, then don't buy, don't buy a house. I mean, if you're, if you know you found the place where you want to raise your kids and, you know, you want to make a family and you want to put down roots, 
then maybe buying a house would make sense if you know that's where you're going to be. But if there's a chance your job's going to move to another location, if there's a Everybody chance Everybody that... thinks they're going to be in the same place. Ian, yeah. I mean, how many places have you lived for 10 say, years? Mark, I was going to say that, um, you know, a lot of people, or at least in my experience, my thought was to just buy a starter home and then upgrade later. But now you're telling me uh, you're not going to really make money until after 10 years. And frankly, I want my starter home to be something that I'm in for three, four years. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. Who, who knows what the future is? I wouldn't right. look at, but, at buying a home, especially in this market, as a moneymaker. I mean, that's, you know, if anything, buying a home is a way to avoid pouring money down the rent hole. But that's really about it. If you I can mean, buy some foreclosure situation or you can buy a short sale and you can see the appreciation. But when you do your math, do your math. I mean, look at what the what rent costs are compared to closing costs on both sides. Because when you buy a house and sell a house, you need to consider those closing costs and they're they're huge uh, it's going to be you know, five, ten thousand dollars sometimes at closing and then you've got the monthly payment and uh, you know i don't know i i'm just so sick of this whole home home ownership thing it's weird to hear you say bill uh, thinking about the price that you're going to sell at because i've always been told now i'm not a homeowner but i've always been told houses are liabilities not assets That's yeah right. Yeah, they de- they depreciate. Over it's a de- time. depreciating liability. Yeah, but it is one that if you asset. you know if, okay, so like you know what are you paying for rent? What are you currently paying in White Plains there, Bill, for for rent? Uh, two thousand dollars a month. Oh, it's pretty pretty hefty. It's How pretty many steep. square feet are you getting for uh, two thousand dollars a month? Excuse me. How many square feet is the house you're uh, you're renting? I'm not renting a house. I'm renting an apartment, um, oh, and it's, okay. it's pretty small. It's probably a thousand square feet, right. if I had to say. So, and what's the millage rate there in in White Plains? What is a millage rate? A millage rate is what you pay as far as taxes goes. It is it's basically a percentage. Usually like two or three percent or something. Yeah, like that. It, it's usually um, it's a percentage of the property that's paid per year. Our annual property taxes here at my mother's house is fifteen thousand dollars a year. Fifteen thousand a year, and that's over the course. Well, of, we don't know what the house is valued at, though. Uh, indeed, but I'm just if if we're just comparing this apples to oranges yeah. comparison here, you're talking about something close to you know it's more than about eleven $1, hundred dollars a a month in just that's the rent payment. So at that point, he's just paying nine hundred dollars more than that to have somebody take care of his right. problems. I mean, Bill's paying uh, two thousand dollars a month for an apartment right now. If you could get a foreclosure for sixty grand or something like that, then you know after three years, the money would have paid on rent would go to pay off that house. So you know it makes sense if you're going to stay in one place. Bill, good luck with your decision. Thanks for the call tonight. The uh, toll free number is eight fifty five four fifty free. But when in doubt, don't buy. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. Kay Oliver is part of the Toyambe Women's Group in Jinja, Uganda. She gets old clothes, fixes them up, washes them, and then sells them at the Jinja market. She was quite happy with her success at her business, but realized that a sewing machine would really help her make more money to take care of her two kids. Free Talk Live helped her get that sewing machine. You can help us help more people by getting your coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com. Make a difference, one cup at a time. Get a free pound, try out the subscription, cancel at any time, coffee.freetalklive.com. Gold isn't for you? Ted Anderson, president of Midas Resources, one of the world's premier gold and precious metal investing firms. I get it. You wouldn't buy gold if you believed that the government is doing a great job, that the Fed will stop handing out trillions of dollars like bailout candy, that Social Security would be there for you. That's not what's happening. You might even pass on gold if the stimulus package wouldn't fuel inflation, or that the dollar wouldn't lose value, or that your retirement would be secure. If all looks rosy to you, then now is not the time to buy gold. For the realists, there have never been more sobering reasons to diversify with gold. Since 2001, the U.S. dollar index has tanked 30% while gold has risen 300%. Right now, savvy investors are adding gold to their portfolios. You should too. Find out what they know. Call us and I'll send you 10 reasons why gold will do very well, free. 800-686-2237. 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. 
On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on doing the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. Find out about giving to our Google AdWords campaign at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp.freetalklive.com. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges. This is Davi Barker from shinybadges.com, and I just want to personally apologize for airing a jingle week after week, month after month, that turned out to be such an infectious brain worm. So to make it up to you, I'm offering a free gift. The next time you make a purchase at shinybadges.com, write worms in the transaction comments, and I'll send you something weird. You're listening to the best Liberty-oriented audio streamed around the clock, on the air, and online. This is the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is Free Talk Live. No dancing allowed without permit in St. George, Utah. But not just St. George. Maybe this applies in your town and you just don't know it. Uh, there's a good chance. I don't know how good the chance is, but there is a chance that this could be the case in your town. It's the case in New York City, from what I understand. They saw the cabaret license there. If you don't have a cabaret license and you're operating a public business, you will not be allowed to have dancing on the premises. I've heard that was the case in New Hampshire. I wouldn't know. I haven't tried really? to throw any d- dances. Well, I don't know. Uh, that wouldn't make sense because it would probably be a local ordinance, not a New Hampshire state uh, thing. Uh, and I did look in Keene, and I didn't see anything about a dance permit. Okay. So there is some sort of permit they want to hold an outdoor, some sort of an event, like a periodic event, something that you would do yearly or monthly or whatever outdoors. They did list a dance as one of the things that could be held outdoors, but uh, there's no actual question on the permit application. Are you going to be having a dance or anything like that? So this isn't true everywhere, but it's true still in enough places to where This makes it into the news from time to time where somebody's trying to have fun. And in this case, it was in in, it was an indoor dance on private property at the Fiesta Fun Zone or whatever it's called there in St. George. Uh, There were hundreds of people who had come out to this thing and hundreds left after the police showed up and said, sorry or not sorry, but they said, screw you. You can't dance here. And we'll get to the statement from the organizer of the party here in a moment. First, though, we've got Adam in Massachusetts. Adam, you're on Free Talk Live with Ian, Derek, Jay, and Mark. Hey, what's up, guys? I'm a big fan. I've been listening for about a week straight now. I actually stumbled across you guys looking for a story about a pumpkin fest. Oh, excellent. I almost went, went, uh, took my girlfriend up there. I'd been there like a few years ago, but uh, I had some car trouble last minute. And then I heard about it Monday, about all the, the craziness that went on, so... Well, take your girlfriend uh, to Keene this weekend for Keenevention instead of Pumpkin Fest. It's going to be uh, not as large of an event, but it could be a lot of fun. Um, so, yeah, so you didn't make it to Pumpkin Fest, but here you are now. What do you have to say? Um, you brought up something earlier uh, when you asked what if the security guards at the party wouldn't let – or the dance party place, if they wouldn't let the police in, what would happen? Yeah. And uh, it, reminded me, it reminded me of a really funny story that, um, from back when I was in the Navy a few years ago. <clears throat> that uh, I thought you guys would like. Um, we're in South Korea in Pusan, and I guess uh, a couple weeks beforehand, some army guys got into some big trouble. So 
that declared the whole place a dry port for our entire battle group. And uh, <clears throat> it's funny because the, the shuttle buses where they drop you off is the street called Texas Street, and it's nothing but bars and whatnot. And I guess they did, the word didn't get out to the locals because they were just flabbergasted that we wouldn't accept any alcohol from them. People were even offering free beers on the sidewalk, and all the sailors were turning them down, and they just had this look of disbelief on their face. Yeah. Sailor? <laughs> but, uh, turning down <laughs> beer? <laughs> what? Yeah, they, what? Were, they were so confused. What but, Navy uh, are you in? <laughs> well, no, they declared it a dry port. They said right. we weren't allowed to, to drink at all. Sure. So the way they enforce this is they get the, the shore patrol guys with their little black armbands walking around. I bet there's some popular fellas sure. there. Oh, yeah, yeah. So we were walking down the street looking for something to eat, and uh, we walked past this Russian bar, and there was this very large Russian guy, bald head, like almost seven feet tall. He, he pulled us aside. He's like, why aren't you guys drinking? And we're like, we're not allowed to. He's like, what do you mean? And we're like, we pointed to the shore patrol guys, and we we're like, <clears throat> if they see us drinking, you know, we'll get in trouble. And he's like, you guys come in, first drink's free, and don't worry about it. So he kind of pushed us in, and uh, we went over to the back of the bar, and we were drinking. And we saw the shore patrol guys clustered around the front door, and they're like, oh, we need to get in there and identify those sailors. And the guy just wouldn't let them in. And it was it was one of the funniest things ever, and they let us out the back door. And nobody Wow, ever that's awesome. Awesome. Wow. You got to love the Russian mob, man. Well, it was in his own interest. <laughs> he he sold yeah. some drinks, right? You bought some yeah. drinks, didn't you? Yep. Yeah, he said the first one was free, <laughs> but <laughs> you're buying the rest of them. I love these Shore Patrol guys. Yeah, I mean, sweet. I bet they were just really put out, too. Oh, yeah. right, we've got to oh, get man, in. They're... Those boys need a referral. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, they were, they were, you could see the steam coming out of their ears. Good story, Adam. You are not respecting our authority. Thanks for the call tonight, yeah. and uh, I look forward to hearing from you again. I appreciate you listening to the show. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE, and uh, you know what? Coffee. You can get a whole pound of it for free by going to coffee.freetalklive.com, but that's not all. Yeah, it's shade-grown, 100% organic, and top 1% grade Arabica beans. Uh, it's really delicious coffee. And you can get high-end coffee on the internet, there's no doubt about it, and maybe in a local coffee shop uh, around your town. Not in a grocery store, um, probably not in a chain store, but what is different about the coffee that you can get at coffee.freetalklive.com is, is that it's BuzzBox Coffee, and they give some of the proceeds back to us to be able to give to organizations like Kiva.org. We're teamed up with Kiva.org, um, and we're giving microloans through them in order to help people around the world get the hand up out of poverty that they need, not a handout, because they're going to pay this back, and then we're going to give that money to somebody else. I love this, uh, this organization. I think it's great if uh, you drink coffee. I think it's it's worth a free pound of coffee at coffee.freetalklive.com. It's a subscription program, and you can cancel it at any time. Coffee.freetalklive.com. All right, so we continue here. You're welcome to share your thoughts with us on the dance party crackdown happening or that happened uh, in St. George just two days ago. This was, what, Saturday night? Friday. Friday night. Uh, they were told you cannot have dancing. We've got Scott on the line. He's in St. George listening to KZNU. Hello, Scott. Hey guys, how's it going? It's good. What's on your mind tonight? Uh, I'm a longtime listener, so I knew you guys would be touching on this tonight. Excellent. Um, I just want to paint a picture for you about like what the St. George police are like. All right, please. please. Um, small, small town, Utah, half Mormon. I mean, that's that's the demographic here. Um, if you can picture like the, the officer from South Park, like Officer Bar Brady. Okay. <laughs> Are you guys familiar? Picture oh, like yeah. twelve of them, twelve of those guys running around town, like trying to fix stuff. Like that's pretty much what it's like here. You've got to have more than twelve cops in St. George. I mean, there's uh, forty well, of them here in Keene, and we've yeah, got a third time, of the population. Well, at any time, there's probably forty, fifty cops here, but at any time, there's twelve. There's at least a dozen. The so they sent half the yeah. force out. I mean, they they sent six officers to shut down this dance party or to to, to stop the dancing. Was, apparently, the music was fine, but the dancing had to be stopped. They sent half of the. You know, they sent six officers out. That was probably most of who they had on duty at the time. Yep, yeah, that's how it works here. If they hear anything on the on the on the call radios, the whole squad's there. Scott. Kind of. I'm trying to figure out what their real motivation was, and I'm speculating um, here. Tell me what you think. Did they want to go to the party, and they didn't want to pay for it, and they didn't want to dance, <laughs> so they just said, no dancing, this is our excuse, this, we're going to show up and listen to the music? Sense. 
Is that it? My my, pers- my personal take on it is that there was going to be like a rap battle there from what I heard on the radio. Oh, so we can't maybe have that. They, maybe they thought there was some kind of gang affiliation or something. It was just a bunch of high school kids just messing around from what I heard. So No they rap shall be battled. Like exactly. They, they might have thought battle meant battle, like they're going to show up with weapons or something. No, I don't, I don't think so. I think you're reaching, man. This is just uh, this is just them shutting down fun. I mean, that's not un, it's not atypical for the police to do this kind of thing, uh, in a, in a, especially in smaller towns, but just in larger places as well. If you don't get your fun permit, then you will be stopped. If if the government doesn't get a slice of the action then they'll shut you down. And thanks for the call tonight, Scott. I appreciate hearing from you. And maybe, you know, this uh, the owner of the fun zone stepped on somebody's toes politically in town, too, and they were just like, ah, pull his dance permit. It's Free Talk Live. You take control here at 855-450-FREE. I love my magic mud. I drink a lot of coffee. I had stains on my teeth. Then I found my magic mud, and I was told it would remove stains. So I paid attention when I brushed the first time. My magic mud is black tooth powder, and the difference it made in my teeth in one application was noticeable. With four, my teeth were as white as you normal folks out there. Please go to mymagicmud.com and buy a jar. There's 150 applications for 25 bucks. You can use Bitcoin, mymagicmud.com. This winter, next to water and food, you need a safe, storable fuel supply for your preparedness needs. Spare fuel is the answer. Unlike gasoline, spare fuel can be safely stored with your other supplies for many years and works in any gas-powered vehicle or backup generator. With the bitterly cold temperatures predicted for this winter, now is the best time to stock up on spare fuel. So go to GetSpareFuel.com. That's GetSpareFuel.com. GetSpareFuel.com. Keenvention is coming up October 31st through November 2nd. Get your tickets now at Keenvention.info. Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire. You can explore the beautiful little city of Keen, discuss various forms of activism with seasoned veterans, attend social events like the costume party. Keenvention received rave reviews last year. If you missed it, visit Keenvention.info for full video coverage of every speaker and panel. This year, James Robin Hood Cleveland, Rich Paul, and Free State Project President Carla Garrick will be keynoting. And we'll have all kinds of panels, including the new Cop Block panel and the new Movers panel hosted by the outlaw Josie Wales. Join old and new friends and neighbors in Keen for Keenvention this October 31st through November 2nd. Only 100 tickets are available in advance, so lock yours in now for just $60 or with Bitcoin. Reserve your tickets now at Keenvention.info. Visit Keenvention.info for more, or look for our page and event on Facebook. That's Keenvention.info. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at freeross.org. That's freeross.org. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. College roommates continue their bonding process until real friends are made, and a teacher hopes they never Google him. It's time for the weekly video feature that's heartier and more comforting than a heaping bowl of mom's butternut squash soup. This is the Onion Week in Review. Longtime James F. Blaine Elementary School teacher Suzanne Pomponio told reporters today that she could not believe how much fatter her second graders are getting. Pomponio estimates that each and every one of her kids must be 8 to 10 pounds heavier than anyone in her 2011 class, adding, quote, and those kids were pretty fat, too. Honestly, I didn't think it was possible that this year's kids could be fatter than last year's, but they are. I mean, short kids are fat, tall kids are fat, and there's a smell. I don't really know how to describe it. Local dad Michael Corain navigated several discount travel websites today with a precision reminiscent of 18th century Viennese prodigy Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart composing a symphony. 
This is the Onion News Network. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. Right side of the page at lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can take control toll-free. 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. You can join us online at freetalklive.com. More coming up on this dancing crackdown in St. George, Utah. But this could be where you live. There's a chance that on the books where you live, there's some sort of dancing ordinance. Either a total prohibition on dancing or because apparently that's what St. George had just up until a few years ago. You could not dance in public. So dancing has been decriminalized in St. George, Utah. It's still a crime to do it without a permit inside a private uh, place of business, but it's no longer a crime to dance in public. So uh, I want to continue this discussion here in moments. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. And is privacy dead? Well, not if you have anything to say about it. On November 7th and 8th, coders, privacy specialists, and idea people of all stripes will join together for Hack the Trackers, a transparency and privacy hackathon brought to you by Ghostery. You can enter online or join them in person in New York City to create tools that make the web a more transparent place or help users manage how much data they share. The hacks will be judged by experts and voted on by an online community. Winners will receive a prize package, including the all-new Black Phone, a secure-by-design smartphone for people who recognize a need for privacy and want a simple, secure place to start. Participation is free and registration is open now. Visit hackthetrackers.com for more information. That's hackthetrackers.com. As we continue here, we're going to go uh, back into your phone calls and thoughts. I still want to hear from somebody who thinks that banning dancing or demanding a permit to allow dancing, which is ultimately you know, close to a ban on dancing, it's, it's preventing dancing from anyone who doesn't have a government permission slip, uh, are there people out there who support this? Derek J., you say that in the comments section on the St. George, Utah article that you're sharing with us here, you did find someone who thinks that this law needs to be enforced. We want to share those comments coming up here. Chris, though, is first listening in St. George to KZNU. Hello, Chris. You're on Free Talk Live. Hi. Uh, how you doing? Hey, good. What's on your mind tonight? Uh, first, I'd like to see if I could make a public call out to everybody in the St. George area because this is a really repressive place and people that have grown up here have just gotten used to it. Mm. Um, this could be a, a center for, for political activism. College students stop doing things like trying to change the name of Dixie College because it sounds racist and figure <laughs> out something real to, to, to work towards. You know, um, I, I remember doing a, my own survey of how many police per capita there were in St. George in 1997. And it turned out there was four times as many police per capita than New York City. Wow. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, when I was younger, I used to try to get into political activism, and, and just nobody got it. But it's, it's apparent that people around here um, have the frustration and the nerve to do it because, like, for instance, the uh, Clive and Bundy's ranch is 30 miles down the freeway. Um, mm -hmm. Before the Tea Party was ever organized, the first – nationwide uh, Tea Party protests on tax day. One of those was held here, and over 1,200 people showed up. And wow. it was it was beautiful. It was young people and old people alike just saying, we've had enough of taxes. Incredible. Um, so, Chris, you've been there your whole life. Um, no, I actually I, I moved down here when I was 15, okay. and uh, I'm 38 now, and I've lived here kind of off and on, but I've lived here for 10 years straight this time. What do you think could be done about this? Um, it, it's just going to take political activism. I mean, what else can be done? I mean, we just got uh, the I, – I don't know the mayor personally, but the, we just got a new mayor, and the previous mayor was in for 20 years. Um, there's – yeah, there is kind what of What about civil disobedience? What about, uh, what about throwing a yeah. dance party? I've – Tried that, and uh, I'm not going to say everything that I have done, but uh, you don't get a very good response, and most people don't get it. How could a they clue? not get this one? Hold on. 
I, I understand that, like, we've had a lot of experience with civil disobedience out here in uh, Keene, New Hampshire. Derek J., you were arrested for it. I've been arrested for it. Um, there's a movie about it, victimlesscrimespree.com. But, uh, you know, there's there's some civil disobedience that by its nature is fairly controversial, like smoking cannabis. Uh, that's a controversial thing to do. It shouldn't be, but it is because some people don't understand the war on drugs. I can't imagine that dancing would be a very controversial form of civil disobedience. I can't imagine what the reason the for way, banning dancing is. I think it's kind of ironic. Guess where Footloose was filmed? Where? In Utah. <laughs> but wasn't it about a southern town? Um, I don't remember. I kind of remember it being about some Midwest town, but it was filmed in, uh, I believe it was Nephi or Lehi, Utah. I see. Well, good luck out there, Chris, and let us know if anything develops right, in this situation. I appreciate hearing from you. One thing you could do is look at the ordinance itself. I know, reading ordinance is not fun, but it is, you know, useful if you're going to do civil disobedience uh, to know what the ordinance actually says. And, you know, are they banning dancing? From what we heard earlier, and all we can go by is, you know, what we're told here, because we don't have a research staff, so you have to do the research on your own. But uh, what we heard earlier was that public dancing is legal. So you could dance in the streets and have no issue. The permit is apparently necessary for some sort of private dance Mm. that is happening. Now, I don't know if that means if the dance is on private property, but out in the open or enclosed within a building. So I don't know what the you know the different circumstances are that would surround having to get this permit uh, for the dance party. But if you could find someone who is a private property owner who's willing to host a dance party, an unlicensed illegal dance party on their premises, find an attorney in advance who's interested in this case, sort of get your ducks in, in a row before you go through with this and then publicly announce that you're going to have an unpermitted uh, dance party, then see what happens. Well, then go to court. One and- thing you want to get ahead of, too, is the narrative that you are costing the town money. Mm, yeah. um, because We had to respond. Right. Remember- We had these- to spend, uh, send all 10 officers out. <laughs> these bureaucrats and officers and politicians, they're not a force of nature. They're responsible for their actions. So if they decide to go to a business and enforce this law, each and every one of these people is responsible for their actions. Now, oftentimes you'll have this— well, only personally responsible. They can't be held legally liable for most of them because of uh, government immunities. I understand that, but I'm talking about sort of, you know, philosophically they're responsible for their okay. actions. But they're accountable. What, but you, what you'll see oftentimes in the community is is that people— the I, I don't know what to call it, but like slave-on-slave slave mentality, mm-hmm. essentially, where— it's like, oh, he's getting us more whoopings. Oh, wait a second. What are you talking about? It's not him. It's the guy giving the whoopings. Mm-hmm. You know, this isn't – it'd be one thing. If, if, if a person jumps into a cage with a lion and gets turned into lunch, I don't feel bad for that person. But – A lion doesn't get, it runs on instinct. It doesn't make decisions like a human does. An officer, six officers that walk into Fun City or whatever to deliver, um, uh, you know, an order that they can't, the kids can't dance. And if they do, the guy's going to get charged for it. Those people are, you know, they're petty tyrants. Oh, yeah. And then they hung out with a video camera. Right. (laughs) I mean, I don't know how many crimes were getting committed in St. George at the time, but these guys were there making sure seven-year-olds didn't, you know, boogie on down. It's ridiculous. I, I like Ian's suggestion of reading the law, getting an attorney, knowing what you're doing before getting into civil disobedience mm-hmm. in this regard. But I would offer another solution, okay. which is following the law but in a way they don't like, uh, which is like towing the line. Like uh, maybe you would have a bunch of people or and maybe you could uh, fake them out, you know, so like there could be a dance party, but no one violating it or some way that people could know what the line is and not cross it because they get just as on edge. They get just as uh, prepared to crack down if they think you might cross that line and you might be able to get them to do just as much of, you know, uh, response as they would normally without all the risk and harm to yourself. Maybe uh, you could do that or sort of prepare for that 
by sending a letter to the city council asking for clarification. Mm. We don't. We want to make sure we are obeying your ordinance, and we want to not have a dance party, but we want to make sure our participants at our party are not dancing. So, what are the criteria to determine if someone is, in point of fact, dancing? It'd be interesting <laughs> to have them try to lay that one out with their stupid laws. 855 450 free. It's Free Talk Live. Here's a good idea. When you have a legal matter like creating your will or legally setting up a business with a corporation or LLC, you don't necessarily need a law firm. Use LegalZoom.com. At LegalZoom.com, you answer straightforward questions online and they take care of the rest. They even review your answers for common mistakes and guarantee your satisfaction. Free Talk Live listeners, you'll get 10% off your order by typing in FTL in the referral box at purchase. Don't procrastinate with these important legal documents. LegalZoom.com. America was built by people with a few dollars and a dream. And while many don't know it, there's one path to success that still only requires a dream and about $10. That's right. If your dream is to start or grow your business, something as simple as the right business card could make all the difference. And today at Vistaprint.com, you can get 500 full-color business cards for only $9.99. That's right. Only $9.99. Just go to Vistaprint.com and enter promo code 8989 at checkout. That's Vistaprint.com. Promo code 8989. Hi folks, Ronnie McMullen here for Life Change Tea. Healthcare is a problem, whether you're for or against Obamacare. That's a mess. My question is, who do you trust? Do you want to be told what to do or do you want to make your own decision? My opinion, preventative maintenance. Keeping your colon clean is preventative maintenance. A little exercise, a balanced diet, and drinking Life Change Tea. It tastes great and it helps with constipation, high cholesterol, liver problems, acid reflux, and much, much more. And with the holiday season upon us, you can get some extra tea for free. Don't wait for Obama. Make your own decision. Order now. Call us at 928 308 0408. That's 928 308 0408. Or you can log on to getthetea.com. That's getthetea.com. Ridding yourself of harmful toxins is truly preventative maintenance. Getthetea.com. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keen. Keen is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keen. Keen is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. 35% of U.S. credit accounts are facing collection agencies. Of that 35, almost 40% are the result of medical bills. Before uninsured friends or family go in for medical treatment, send them to asiarunlikehellguide.com. No computer tracing, no tracking cookies. They will not go on a list. Privacy matters. Just tell us what you need. Get a quote. Fractions of U.S. prices. asiarunlikehellguide.com. Do you love Twitter? Make sure you favorite the LRN.FM Twitter account so you can receive our tweets at twitter.lrn.fm. That's twitter.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. You dial toll-free. Bring up anything right here. 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. You can join us online at freetalklive.com. Please enjoy the features that we have waiting for you 
Uh, once again, that's freetalklive.com. Hey, uh, great movie I mentioned earlier, Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. You can go and watch it for free anytime you want at victimlesscrimespree.com. And we had somebody call the show the other night, Derek J, when you were not on, uh, to let us know that he just watched the movie for the first time. So it's nice that here we are two years later uh, since the, the movie's release. It's been just over two years. Uh, and people are still discovering it for the first time. Isn't so, that cool? Yeah, I love it. And it's a great movie. You can go watch it for free at victimlesscrimespree.com. As we continue with your calls and thoughts, there was a victimless crime that could have happened in St. George, Utah, had the business owner of the Fun Zone or the Family Fun Center or whatever it's called, Family Fiesta Fun? Fiesta Fun Zone. Fiesta Family That's Fun Zone? Something like that. I would put it a different way. A real victim crime was committed by these officers. By the police. Hundreds of victims of uh, people who would have been at a lovely dance party who That's otherwise... That's a great point. Yeah, and, and the business owner who lost, what, 80% of his expected business. Oh, so Tons of victims involved in this crime. Well, right, the club, the promoter who put this event on hired the fun center as the venue so the fun center they probably got paid but they didn't make as much as they could have Mm -hmm. right because you know if you're going to have the event there there's probably some sort of a set fee or they'll let you have the event in return for being able to sell food and drink so i don't know how the what the deal was there could have been a combo of both as well but either way they didn't sell near as much food and drink at the fun center and the party promoter didn't sell near as many tickets as uh, as they were hoping to the basically the event was scuttled by the fact that uh, no dancing was allowed it's a crazy story we're going to get the statement from the promoter here in moments but we still have folks in uh, St. George who have thoughts about this would love to hear uh, from you if you want to share 855 450 free uh we are on in st george we're live on kznu and that's where mike is listening mike you're on free talk live go ahead hey guys just wanted to chime in on the dancing issue here uh one i'd like to correct the gentleman called in earlier i i think we have to boost up the the ratio of lds versus other religions to maybe about 75 percent Okay. And I thoroughly believe that uh, the puritanical nature of the LDS Church is more or less behind this in the laws. But we had there. a Mormon call earlier who said there's no prohibition on dancing within the Mormon Church. Yeah, I was, was going to ask that. Well, I don't know about inside the church because I'm not, I'm not Mormon, but I know on the outside here they write these laws and pretty much uh, try and keep the town toned down. There's only three bars in town. Only oh my goodness! Days. This uh, is a city of yeah, seventy thousand people, and there's only three bars. Yeah, we got twice three that, bars, and we're a third of the size. Three, three, three bars that only serve beer, and uh, pretty much uh, we had, you know, police force will come in into the bar every once in a while to make their rounds to check to see who's in there. Sounds fun. Uh, I even heard <laughs> a recent bar where they've taken names down, uh, where people would walk in and uh, you know see who you are and where you're going and. Uh, so when you, when you rewind things here between that, we have liquor stores in town that are run by the state. So like the DMV, we have state employees running our liquor stores down mm-hmm. here. Mm-hmm. It's so, the same way, unfortunately, I mean, it, here in New Hampshire, where the state runs the liquor stores, which I think is a huge problem that needs to be solved. But So what you're saying is, Mike, you believe that despite the Mormons not having a prohibition on dancing, uh, that it is sort of the the influence of the church folk on the town that has... Uh, has repressed people's expressions like this. Definitely, I, I definitely see that repression. I see a mixture of uh, you know church and state going on over here. That uh, you well, know councilmen, people won't admit it, but uh, they're heavily influenced by the state because uh, the church pretty much, I think, uh, is a big power to be out here, whether it's business or what have you. Well, I they're, think that if it's true, of things. Hey, Mike, thanks for the call tonight, man. I appreciate hearing from you. If if it's true that the no obviously there may be some Mormons listening saying well that that guy's just totally wrong our religion encourages dancing we even have dances I think the Mormon Church could really come out ahead on this one they could throw the dance party we were talking oh, about that would be yeah, killer doing a civil disobedience on this make it into both a religious freedom and a freedom of speech freedom of expression issue at the same time have yes. a private dance party thrown by the Mormon Church uh, they probably won't have a rap battle unless it's like Jesus <laughs> rap battle or something like that but they could that could be awesome are you guys <laughs> familiar with the shakers uh they make furniture they're like quakers um shakers are like a spin-off of the quakers Didn't and they die off 
They're pretty much. Well, they had this. Uh, <laughs> Who's the, making the furniture? They were celibate. Well, they make shaker style furniture. Okay. They no longer make shaker furniture. <laughs> they found the plans. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's uh, it's simple and well made furniture okay. is basically what shaker style is, and um, they but, but they were celibate, so you know it's hard Unlike to make more shakers. So that's why they died out. That's That'll exactly right. Well, <laughs> what they were is they were the home for they were the uh, you know they they would send the orphanage. They were essentially the orphanage before there was an orphanage. So uh-huh. they would send all the kids to oh, the Shakers. Oh, send them to the Shakers, right? And then they would raise them, and then you know they would either stay or leave. With the Industrial Revolution, the males would leave, make more money, and I don't then, know if I know. trust my baby with people that shake. Well, um, <laughs> what the Shakers did was they were they were dancing to express their joy to God or uh-huh. whatever. So this was their Aww. whole thing. Is their um, they were you know they were dancing as a form of prayer. It was a sort of a physical form of prayer. <laughs> the shaking doesn't evoke uh, thoughts of dancing. Well, it sounds like this. You're having some sort of an attack. <laughs> well, what they 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 got their names because they originally were just sort of they did whatever dance they felt uh-huh. like doing at the time, which probably looked like a bunch of people, you know, wiggling around. <laughs> and, did they do the chanting too, like the gobbledygook stuff? No, I don't think they did. Um, maybe they did, but uh, as time went by, they then began to do choreographed dances to um, singing. So you know, I feel like things got kind of warped over time. But nonetheless, I, I How think How many generations was this? Like one generation and they were gone or two generations? No, it was more than that. I would say it was about 100 years. I'd have to look it up to huh. see when the uh, the gal that started the Shakers exactly started. But it, essentially by so some the, of them didn't take the celibacy thing too seriously. 1860s then. and 1870s. Oh, they took it seriously while they were there. Um, you know, they there wasn't a whole lot of people that got pregnant while at— That's what I was going to say. How did they make it 100 years? What do you mean? Well, there's a couple of generations. I said they were orphan. They took all the orphans in. Oh, and they converted them or whatever. Well, Ian, they they okay. There's no orphanage. Yeah. They you know town fathers or whomever would give the orphans to the Shakers. They would raise the kids. Mm-hmm. Enough people would come by, and plus this is a commune where there's a percentage of the population that's never going to work hard enough to have a good life for themselves. So these people would be what they called winter Shakers. Um, they would come come <laughs> along in December and leave in April and <laughs> leave for free, right? And they wouldn't, uh, you know, they would the couples wouldn't have sex or whatever. They'd just, you know, be say, but they'd come back the next year mm. and that kind of thing. So they'd give their time and energy during the winter, but during the summer they weren't uh, putting uh, putting all their time in. Fun fact about Mormon dancing: Benji, winner of So You Think You Can Dance uh, eight years ago, was Mormon, and his whole family are dancers. So mm, yeah, there okay. is no prohibition uh, what, on dancing in the, the Mormon Osmonds. religion. I mean, come on, huh? The Osmonds. Yeah, you know who family, the Osmonds are? The famous no. family. Not God. so famous. I really? Guess. I know who Donnie they are. and Marie Donnie Osmond. And Marie Osmond. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, singers, right? Singers and yeah, dancers. dancers. I mean, you know, yeah, they dance. And they tour geriatric homes. <laughs> Much more than that. <laughs> Let's go to Jeff. He's in uh, Pennsylvania. You're on Free Talk Live, Jeff. Pick up that phone, Jeff. You there? Yeah, how you doing? Oh, you're on the radio. Go ahead. You are on the air, you Jeff. There? Right here. Go ahead. Can you hear us? Yeah, sorry about that. Sorry Excellent. Trouble. Go ahead, sir. So it's a little interjecting your uh, discussion about the Utah dance party. Um, so I was uh, the interviewer in that uh, video you guys were talking about on Thursday. What video was uh, that? Yeah. How to make a progressive uh, lose their S. Uh, oh, hey. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, so I uh, just kind of want to call in, and uh, I was I was in Washington, D.C. over the weekend, so I didn't get a chance to uh, listen to you guys. Um, kind of just clear the air a little and uh, talk about some interesting things that have happened after it. Uh, so just for our listeners and, that don't know what we're talking about, uh, you and uh, you were not the cameraman, you were the interviewer, so you and a cameraman – uh, we're interviewing some character who was doing some campaigning for some politician outside of somewhere. And uh, this individual got very upset with you when you suggested that violence was backing his progressive policies. Uh, and so he flipped out and started cursing and was very, very angry and basically walked off, stormed, stormed off. Uh, it was a you know, pretty entertaining video, and we played the audio of it on Thursday night. So you wanted to give us an update on what happened later? Yeah, exactly. Well, uh, that was uh, Chris Monka was the uh, filmmaker, and uh, me and him, he's the president of uh, our Students for Liberty chapter at Westchester University. Okay. It's a state university. It's pretty large, about 20 miles west of Philadelphia. Um, we actually had Derek Skype in with us once, which was pretty awesome. I'd like to thank him for that. Um, and, uh, yeah, basically what's happened since... Kind of to our dismay is the campaign 
you know, for this local congressional seat is actually the Republican took the video and uh, basically blasted it out on his Twitter, uh, kind of like dismaying the other side, you know, saying, yeah, Gravetti is or, or the other, you know, the, his Democratic opponent. Jeff, hold the story. I want to finish it up. Coming up in hour number three, if you can hang on, we'll bring you back. It's Free Talk Live. Have you thought about owning gold? There are lots of reasons to own precious metals. A hedge against inflation. When the dollar tanks, metals go up. A barter currency. You can disempower the Fed by using real money. And no one knows the future. In an economic collapse, metals are likely to be a currency. Do as I've done for years. Buy your gold and silver and precious metals from Midas Resources through gold.freetalklive.com. That's gold.freetalklive.com. Talk radio generally and Free Talk Live specifically are a really inexpensive way to reach customers. All advertising is about return on investment. If you keep your investment low, you have a better chance of seeing a proper return. Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations and the internet, reaching hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business, project, website, or idea. Email me, mark at freetalklive.com. I love my magic mud. I drink a lot of coffee. I had stains on my teeth. Then I found my magic mud, and I was told it would remove stains. So I paid attention when I brushed the first time. My magic mud is black tooth powder, and the difference it made in my teeth in one application was noticeable. With four, my teeth were as white as you normal folks out there. Please go to mymagicmud.com and buy a jar. There's 150 applications for 25 bucks. You can use Bitcoin, mymagicmud.com. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's post pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty news and activist updates online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Monday, October 27th, 2014. Gold is trading around $1,233, silver $17.24, and Bitcoin is trading around $350.30. Today's Bitcoin price brought to you by ExpressCoin, the fastest and most reliable way to buy Bitcoin. Buy Bitcoin today at ExpressCoin.com. Support for Liberty Beat comes from Central Texas Gunworks, your online source for firearms, firearm accessories, and ammunition. They take major credit cards and now accept Bitcoin. Visit them online, shop.centraltexasgunworks.com. In the news, on Friday, a U.S. drone strike was reported to have killed three suspected members of a local branch of al-Qaeda in the Arab Peninsula in Yemen. Reuters reported that tribal sources confirmed the deaths were members of the al-Qaeda group currently fighting the Shiite Muslim Healthy Group. However, Press TV reported that tribal sources stated that up to 20 people may have died. Drone strikes in Yemen have been a controversial topic since Human Rights Watch released a report detailing the deaths of Yemeni civilians at the hands of the United States government. The killings are being done in violation of international law. The FBI has released two updated reports from the Office of the Inspector General concerning the FBI's use of the controversial national security letters. The reports were released to the New York Times through a FOIA request. The updated documents were originally from 2007 and 2008 and have now been reissued with newly declassified information. NSLs are orders that give the FBI authority to gather data from companies without judicial approval. They are typically issued with a gag order, preventing the recipients from speaking about the request. The Electronic Frontier Foundation said the excessive classification and redaction continue to prevent new information from being released. A new policy study published in the journal JAMA Pediatrics proposes a mandatory criminal background check for every firearm sale as a way to protect the children. The report examined the federal policies in the United States related to children's health and health care. The researchers found that child poverty in America is at its highest point in 20 years and say that five children die daily from firearms. They offered 10 steps for the federal government to help children, including a background check for gun sales. Support for Liberty Beat comes from Marjorie Wildcraft's Grow Your Own Groceries, homegrown food on every table. 
That's growyourowngroceries.org. And support comes from Midas Resources Incorporated, helping clients convert their paper 401ks and IRAs to solid gold and silver. Get their 10 Reasons book free by calling 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. This is the Liberty Beat for Monday, October 27th, 2014. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com and like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash thelibertybeat. The Thin Blue Line, the unwritten police compact which holds that officers should get each other's back no matter the circumstance, has been crossed. This is a Liberty Beat special report. On day two of the Antonio Beeler trial, which wrapped up late Friday afternoon, Austin, Texas police officer Jermaine Hopkins testified on behalf of Beeler's defense regarding the ins and outs of reasonable suspicion. Hopkins has a history of going against the grain at APD. During his testimony, it was revealed that he is currently on administrative leave for taking a complaint of discrimination outside of the chain of command. For bringing forward the complaint, Hopkins stated APD retaliated against him, withholding his overtime pay. The Department of Labor has ruled against APD's decision. However, Hopkins' testimony on behalf of Beeler means more than overtime pay. Asked by the defense if he has faced retaliation for agreeing to testify, Hopkins told the court he would no longer have a job as of October 30th, with his supervisor informing him of his termination after learning of his subpoena to testify. Beeler is being tried for the Class C misdemeanor failure to obey the order of an officer in association with his infamous New Year's Day 2012 arrest where he filmed officers Oborski and Snyder violently ripping a young woman from the passenger side of the car in Austin, Texas. Day three of the trial takes place today. Beeler's attorney, Millie Thompson, is hoping to convince the jury that the order given to Beeler to put his hands behind his back was not a lawful order, as Officer Oborski had no reasonable suspicion to detain him in the first place. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from Sovereign Living, a podcast, blog, and reality show about what it takes to live a voluntary and natural life. Check out the blog at SovereignLiving.com and watch episode one of the soon-to-be-released reality show at SovereignLiving.tv. This is the Liberty Beat for Monday, October 27, 2014. I'm Brian Hagan reporting. Reminding you, spread liberty with a smile. Clark County paramedics responded to a frantic 911 call from a nearby motel this morning where the Lord our God, a divine creator and ruler of the universe, had been found nude and unconscious following his latest suicide attempt. God, whose sources say had recently grown far more depressed and withdrawn from humanity than usual, reportedly attempted to hang himself from the base of his motel showerhead after ingesting an unknown quantity of Ambien. Motel sources claim that God's room had been left in a state of disarray and revealed that they had found a brief note written by the omnipotent deity saying that the suicide stems from long periods of unhappiness he had been suffering in recent millennia, including the death of his only child, thousands of years of war and genocide, chronic weight gain, and the aftermath of his messy 15,088 BC divorce. Paramedics say the supreme being had no pulse when they arrived. The Lord's overdose comes in the wake of several widely publicized previous suicide attempts, including a 1985 incident when the Lord leapt from the Grand Canyon but changed into a bird at the last second and flew to safety. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. Do you have your permit for this dance? That's what we've been talking about throughout the show here tonight. Uh, Six police officers showing up at a dance party, what was intended to be a dance party, what the organizers thought was going to be a dance party, what the organizers thought they had the permit for to have the dance party, which is, of course, ridiculous that you would need to ask anyone's permission to have someone dancing on your premises, but that's what they require in St. George, Utah, and maybe where you live. Don't scoff at this, thinking that this couldn't happen where you live. It very well could happen. You just don't know, because you probably haven't read through the ordinances in, in the city. Maybe there just hasn't been an issue. Maybe everybody's begged permission for their dance party, and there hasn't been this issue. Because, you know, had they gotten the permit, this wouldn't be in the news. But it became news because the city, for some reason, sort of last minute decided to add a no dancing provision to the dance permit that they had received. Derek J has details. We're going to get back into the story. Your calls and thoughts are certainly welcome. We're going to get a statement from the party organizer who basically probably lost money or came damn close to losing money on this party because not as many people came out 
In fact, people left the party as a result of the police showing up with a video camera, six cops coming into this location, and then announcements were forced. They forced somebody to make announcements saying that, uh, you know, you couldn't be dancing at the party. So they could play music. They could play loud music. Just can't dance to it. Toll free number 855-453. So nice of the uh, the government to let you play music at your event. <laughs> We've got Skype as well. You can Skype into the show at username lrn.fm. We'll, we'll continue that discussion here in moments. We've got Jeff on the line in Pennsylvania. Jeff, you were the interviewer in the uh, video that, uh, that Johnson brought in on Thursday night. Uh, it was filmed, I guess, outside of Philly somewhere, and uh, there was some sort of candidate for office who had a representative that was campaigning for him and you guys started asking this guy questions about his beliefs you know because all he was doing was just sort of repeating the campaign platform the general statements about what it means to be progressive and you suggested that maybe well that would mean violence being enacted on people and he got pretty upset about that and uh, and stormed off after let lo- letting loose uh, a string of profanities. The video is on YouTube. Uh, and what is it entitled? Something about how to make a progressive lose their S? Yeah, exactly. That's the, uh, the name of the video. So you were calling tonight to inform us on what happened afterwards. And you barely got into the story because we were at the very end of the hour. So go ahead. Yeah, basically what would happen kind of to uh, mine and Chris's dismay is that um, the other candidate who we you know, weren't interviewing, uh, uh, volunteer for, um, basically took that video and tweeted it out and is trying to use it kind of like as a political leverage in his campaign to show like these are the radicals mm-hmm. working for the other guy. So you weren't and doing it- this because you support the other candidates? Oh, certainly not. And, you know, that's the unfortunate part with being a libertarian or a person who just believes not in violence, um, you know, that it's just, oh, well, if you don't believe in this, then you're the other. And, you know, that's unfortunate that we get categorized like that. But we would have certainly done it to a uh, Republican. Uh, could you, you know, spin yeah, this yeah, in? Could you spin this into more publicity for your group? You're with the Students of uh, students for Liberty group. Uh, which campus was it? Uh, this is Westchester. It's a uh, state school. About Westchester. Miles away, so. so couldn't you reach yeah. out now to this politician who's using your video uh, as a political platform, essentially, to talk about how great he is in comparison? Hey, we're the guys that did that video. Uh, we'd love to do a follow-up interview with you and get your thoughts <laughs> and then sit down with this guy, the actual politician, instead of one of his uh, campaigners, and put the question to him as well and see how he answers You know, being affiliated with violence. And then you could call him out as essentially being the same as and no different from the progressive candidate. Exactly. That would be a great thing to do. Unfortunately, I don't think he's going to do that because he's ahead by, I think, six points in the race. Yeah, he- and he knows that he's going to... He's not a fool. Every time with that interview. <laughs> yeah. Um, but also, you know, just as a point, too, that I'd like to point out in just in discussion and Facebook comments and YouTube comments, I mean, there's a lot of libertarians who are coming out kind of advocating, saying, like, man, why why didn't you punch that guy in the face? What? You know, and it's 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 just kind of disheartening. And I know they claim to be libertarians, and I highly doubt they are. But, uh, yeah. Are uh, we talking about YouTube it, commenters? Yeah, but even Facebook commenters or even people that I've had wow. discussions with who have libertarian leanings, uh, they kind of they say, "Man, he was he's dead wrong." And I think this is just so punch him in the face. Him. Yeah, it's, it's a, I would have you know gotten <laughs> angry or had to control your emotion. Good and for you for a, not. I mean, good for you yeah. for not uh, reacting in the same way that this guy. I mean, this guy was out of control. Yeah, it's it's pretty dumbfounding. But you know, the silver lining is that. There's a lot of people who weren't really politically a- active that I showed the video to and a lot of close friends who now seem to get an interest in it's almost like a clicking point is to see that, you know, when people are backed into a corner or understand something or are told something they don't understand that, you know, the general reaction might be to get violent or to get, um, you know, upset or angry. Yeah, and also, I mean, you're talking about internet critics. I mean, these are people who have probably never made a video in their entire lives 
Uh, they have no idea what goes into it, and maybe they feel like they would do this. You know, they feel like if they were uh, in an argument that they would lash out violently, which, of course, is a reason for them to not go out into the public and to make fools of themselves and end up getting charged criminally and held liable for, for hurting somebody. Uh, you know, Derek J., you and I, we've got a lot of pra practice going uh, out there and, and dealing with people. Mark will tell you he's not the right guy for that job. He would possibly, I mean, hopefully not, but, you know, you've, you're not so, so sure about your ability to stay calm, in which case, stay home. You're not the right person for man on the street or ambush style uh, interviews in this case. So kudos to you, Jeff, for, for keeping your cool. My critique of the video, as you heard, since you probably listened to the conversation we had on Thursday, was that I felt like the reason why the guy took offense in the first place was because the way the what you said to him made it sound like oh well you're a progressive and so your policies will uh, will bring violence about on people and it didn't really communicate that violence is already uh, part and parcel of the system and that you obviously know that as somebody who's in Students for Liberty but I felt like that was miscommunicated to him and it set him off now there's no excuse for how he behaved towards you you know but that's what I think the the main miscommunication was that sort of started uh, a series of further miscommunications your thoughts yeah obviously um you know, I think it's a little bit of a balance. I think um, Mark had mentioned that, that, you know, certainly cognitive dissonance is, is you know, evident there, too. But, yeah, I, I didn't do the best job leading into the question, and I will admit that. I've done many better interviews in my life. Uh, that's not the best one. Um, and, you know, <laughs> is that I, the I one really that got all the views, to... though? Yeah, that's the one that gets all the views, unfortunately. <laughs> but and, but it, it still, as much as I like to say, yeah, I really, you know, messed up. Well, you got to get out there. I mean, it, out of it. the and, more yeah, you get out there, the more you put it out there, the more you're going to blow something. You're going to screw something up at some point. And it's, you know, you're live. You, you know, you don't get another retake. Um, so kudos to you for going out there and doing it. We need more people like you uh, in this movement, specifically in New Hampshire. Do you have any plans to uh, make the move to New Hampshire as part of the Free State Project? Uh, yeah, we, uh, we, I've been thinking about it. I've been talking about it. Oh, Chris, my friend over in Westchester, is very interested. Uh, go to pork fest things like that and you know it's just a you have really been cool to pork fest uh, i didn't last year i'm gonna be going next year chris was up there um you know he's trying to get me to go and you know, hopefully yeah. I can make it out there you did you two make uh, did you guys make peace with the subject of the interview after the camera cut out oh absolutely not actually and that's another great story um that after when i was in the debate because it was before the debate uh for the congress seat um he actually came up to me and, and kept, you know, insulting me, basically. And I said, hey, you want to step outside? To, you know, have a discussion outside. And he kind of took that as, wow, now you're getting violent. Which I thought was kind of funny. Um, so, uh, yeah, he did not like it. Um, you didn't you have know, the camera nearby people. when he came back up for uh, round two? No, unfortunately not. But I think his friends kind of realized that he was a little out of line and, he looked like the fool that night. I don't oh, know. He yeah. didn't look like one at all. Yeah, so. he definitely did. So, yeah, definitely come up to Pork Fest, the Porcupine Freedom Festival. It's the summertime event, as uh, you you know, but our listeners may not. The summertime event put on by the Free State Project in northern New Hampshire. It's a great excuse to come up and meet many in the community here. Of course, Liberty Forum is coming up sooner, uh, which is happening in March. And this weekend is Keenvention as well. All of these Woo! are great excuses to come up and meet the Liberty community here. But we, we need more people like you, people with the ability to go out and put the ideas of liberty out there and get it on video. Thanks, Jeff, for doing that, and uh, thanks for the call tonight. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That is the Pro XPN toll-free line. You can take control here. This is Free Talk Live. Are you searching for your soulmate? Someone you can trust who will never betray you or cooperate with the NSA? Stop searching. With EasyDNS, you found a keeper. EasyDNS does it all. Domain names, web hosting, and managed WordPress hosting. EasyDNS stands up for your internet freedom. And with servers in Canada, they do not cooperate with the NSA. Go to EasyDNS.com. You'll love their services or get a full refund. They guarantee it. And they accept Bitcoin. That's EasyDNS.com. Here's a good idea. When you have a legal matter like creating your will or legally setting up a business with a corporation or LLC, you don't necessarily need a law firm. Use LegalZoom.com. At LegalZoom.com, you answer straightforward questions online, and they take care of the rest. They even review your answers for common mistakes and guarantee your satisfaction. Free Talk Live listeners, you'll get 10% off your order by typing in FTL in the referral box at purchase. Don't procrastinate with these important legal documents. LegalZoom.com. 
On the average, Americans work between 45 to 50 years, hoping to build up enough wealth to retire and live out their golden years. Unfortunately, with taxation, the rising cost of food, energy, housing, and medical, many retirees are forced to live below the poverty line. Is this a flaw free enterprise, or is our monetary unit we call the Federal Reserve Note forcing us into perpetual debt, ensuring inflation and higher taxes? These questions and more can be answered by reading G. Edward Griffin's book, The Creature from Jekyll Island. Congressman Ron Paul states it's what every American needs to know about central bank power. A gripping adventure into the secret world of international banking cartel. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. I will give a silver dollar from the early 1900s to anyone who purchases this book. Call 1-800-686-2237 and order a copy today. It's critical that the public be made aware of the system. Call and order your copy today at 1-800-686-2237. That's 1-800-686-2237. A meme is not easy to define. What is it? But you know it when you see it. Amazing. Don't Tread on Meme.com proves that. I feel so enlightened. Don't Tread on Meme, M E M E, helping you give the finger to our monetary system of deception by providing you with silver dime trading cards. Unlike today's dollar, they have value. And they look neat, too. Oh, would you look at those? Aren't those just swell? Don't tread on meme.com. While you're browsing their numerous silver dime card designs, take time to download the easy-to-use silver calculator app. This simple piece of technology lets you know instantly, whether using iPhone or Android, just how much your silver coin is worth. Find out all the details at don'ttreadonmeme.com. Now accepting Bitcoin. Don't tread on meme, your path to a voluntary society with honest money. Don't tread on meme.com, serving you faster than the Fed prints money. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. Nothing compares to a good cup of coffee. But if you're getting your coffee from the store, you're likely not getting a good cup of coffee. Free Talk Live's teamed up with BuzzBox to bring you a free pound of the best of the best coffee, shade-grown, organic, top 1% grade Arabica. But what's different is that for every 10 people that get coffee through our link, coffee.freetalklive.com, we can give another micro loan through Kiva. When the loan's paid, we lend the money again. Help others, one cup at a time, coffee.freetalklive.com. Listen to LRN.FM on any phone, anytime. 213-493-0309. That's 213-493-0309. This is Free Talk Live, and you can bring up whatever you'd like. Just dial in toll-free here at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-450. 3733antiwar.com doing a fundraising drive, and it may be one of the most important uh, that they've ever done. Yeah, as a matter of fact, they're down to a skeleton crew over there with uh, minimal pay. They're committed to keeping the website up. It's uh, even the worst of uh, situations, but they can't do it for free. They can't do it without you. They need your donation. Please go to antiwar.com and donate or call them today if you want news items that uh you know take a take another side of uh t take another look at these international relations uh, stories because i i often feel like i'm just getting one side of the story antiwar.com after i have a chance to read that i feel like i'm getting other parts of the story so this is valuable and nobody's you know th th that's not going to get the big sponsors they're not they don't have the deep pockets there's not the politicians it's not the military industrial complex supporting antiwar.com it's just you and i so antiwar.com slash donate because war is the health of the state and they take bitcoin as well they Let's certainly do go to the phones and your calls and thoughts more about the crackdown on the dance party in saint george utah no dancing allowed without a permit let's go first though to brett that's coming up brett though is on with us Calling from Des Moines. You're on Free Talk Live, Brett, via Skype. Hey, hey thanks for taking my call. Welcome, sir. Uh, yeah, so um, I've got a couple of questions. I've 
known about the Free State Project for quite some years, and uh, I'm kind of at a point in my life now where uh, I, I, I feel like it's you know it's time to figure out where I want to move to and settle, and and so it's been on my mind a lot. Um, but what I do for a living, I, I'm a DJ. Um, mm. So my first question was: Does that mean you work at a strip club? <laughs> I wish. No, actually, no. I uh, just nightclubs, and I travel a little bit, you know, okay. for for some out of state gigs and stuff like that. But um, I'm just wondering, what's the nightlife like in? I I, I don't know if Keene really would have anything, but maybe not like much Manchester. in Keene. Uh, but Derek J, you visited out in Manchester a time or two. Uh, can you comment to the big city? Yeah, Manchester's got some clubs. It's got some fun nightlife. I think there are DJ gigs to be had there. Uh, but people in Manchester would be better to ask. Frankly, I've never lived there or spent more than a weekend there. Yeah, that might be a good question to ask on like the Free State Project Facebook group. There's a Facebook group with about seven thousand uh, members, and you know, just to kind of throw that out there. Of course, yeah. if you're in the Manchester area or in Nashua, which is the second largest city with about seventy thousand people living there, you're not far from Boston, and you know, a lot of other sort of New England areas. I'm pretty have... sure Boston's got some people in it. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's a good point. This is uh, this is the kind of question you have to answer for yourself because people are either going to say, "Oh, the night." Nightlife stinks, or oh, the nightlight's awesome, and Good point. they don't really have. Uh, you're an you're an expert. You're professional at what it is that you know you're looking for. They're a bunch of amateurs that mm. uh, you know may go or may not go to clubs, and may you know may, may be cynical about the local area, or, or maybe you know delighted with it. So what you really need to do is you need to come and see. Now you may yeah. be able to find somebody who's can uh, you know take you around, sort of point you to some clubs in the uh, Manchester area or something. like like that by going on and, and talking to people on the Facebook page or the forum or whatever. But you need to see this for yourself, and you need to not uh, ask amateurs. I have also I heard uh, from someone who is a professional, uh, Luther actually used to be the one of the hosts of Free Talk Live. Yeah. Uh, he's a professional musician. Right. Uh, he says that, uh, or he had said that the seacoast, specifically Portsmouth, is also a very big music-friendly town. So you may find but he kind of does eclectic music. Um, so I don't does know rock if... music. Um, anyway, you um, he's touring now, but that's true. Regardless, uh, so that's another possibility as far as Portsmouth. It's also even closer to Boston than uh, than Manchester, and rumor has it. There is a nightlife in Portsmouth as well. So, you know, New England is, uh, it's a small place, all things considered. And so there's uh, those several states, you'll probably want to get gigs outside of New Hampshire would be my guess. So you'll probably want to end up doing gigs in Portland, Maine, in Boston, Massachusetts, and wherever else uh, you can get them. Would That's just me guessing based on uh, my limited experience and seeing where people throw raves. And that's that may be a different kind of DJing than what you're doing. It sounds like you're just doing club DJ. Uh, but, you know, I know that rave parties tend to get thrown in, in you know, cities all across New England, not so much uh, in New Hampshire. But there are definitely dance clubs and nightclubs in, you know, places like Manchester and Portsmouth here. I would like to see more of them. I'll, uh, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, Derek. No, that's all I'm saying. You bring some. Bring, yeah, he'd like bring to the see party. More. <laughs> right. Well, that's just it. You know, you can also create something, too. I don't know how much uh, money you've got, but uh, the more investors we have here, the more people with capital, with the idea of, uh, you know, be creating an entrepreneurial kind of thing and bringing something new to the table, that's also, a, a, a you know, that would be very useful to have. But. Well, well. I'll, uh, I'll I definitely have a couple of friends in Boston. Um, I didn't even, that didn't even occur to me. So um, there I'll, you go. I'll, I'll pass around. <laughs> but I, hey, I have one other quick question uh, yeah. if you have time. Sure. Um, kind of a w- weird question, but what's uh, what's the internet situation like there? It's I'm 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 a huge like it's really important to me. To it's have, good actually. So, um, no. yeah. Doesn't uh, Portsmouth have uh, FiOS? F- Portsmouth does does have FiOS, which is uh, or the equivalent of FiOS. It used to be a Verizon uh, thing in New Hampshire, but they they sold uh, to a different company. But they do have fiber uh, fiber optic internet out uh, on the seacoast region, and even all the way out here in the woods of Keene, uh, we've got wideband from Time Warner. I've got thirty megabits down here and five megabits up at the studio. I live in uh, the woods. I can get fifteen down. Yeah. So I mean, as lo- that's something you want to check before you move. Move into a place you want to make sure like if you're going to be buying someplace or renting in a place that's rural uh you're going to want to double check and make sure that internet is available there there are some areas where it's restricted where it's not really available but even small towns are starting to get it and mark is in a very
very small town, which uh, it was kind of rough in the beginning for you, Mark. You were doing satellite internet, but yeah. they, the DSL did finally come out that way. So Caught if you're, you're going to be, even in some of the small towns, you can get decent internet in New Hampshire. And if you're in an, an urban area, you'll be just fine. Cool. Well, good to know. Um, so, yeah, I guess uh, that's all I had. I, awesome. I'm planning on going to Porkfest next year, so hopefully I get to meet you guys and uh, appreciate you taking my call. Good Thanks. plan, Brett. We'll see you there. And see thank ya. you for the call tonight. So, yeah, toll-free number tonight, 855-450-FREE. And the more young people that move to New Hampshire as part of the Free State Project, the more demand there will be for nightlife-type services and things like that. So, yeah, it would be great to see an expansion in that way. Yeah, that's something I want. And that's something I tried to add as part of the culture here when I moved, uh, seeing not as many dance parties as I was used to in Philly. I was like, well, let's throw our own. Well, there's going to be one more this weekend, Keenvention, uh, on Saturday night, the First ever, and maybe only ever, I don't know, we'll see how it goes, uh, Halloween dance party. It's uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. Definitely one for the books. Yep, looking forward to that. So you can bring up anything that you want, and we did not ask permission for uh, a dance permit. No. Uh, I don't think such a thing exists in Keen based on a cursory uh, bit of research into the subject. Of course, I didn't research it before the party. <laughs> I only researched it tonight, given that we uh, we have had news about St. George, Utah, cracking down on a family fun party. I mean, this was going to be at a like a fun center kind of thing. Uh, anybody was invited. It was uh, it was actually, I guess it's not a family fun. It was an 18 and up uh, party. But you know, it sounds like a rave. Oh, I thought it was, it was younger than that. Okay. It sounds like a rave. And, and I've been to raves at these uh, sort of venues where it's like the bumper cars and the arcade. And it's a blast. Everybody has fun and, you know, it's no big deal. But it was a big deal in St. George. We'll give you the statement from the party promoter. They got cracked down on. The cops showed up with video with a video camera. They lurked about throughout the whole party just to make sure nobody started to wiggle their butt or something. 855 450 free. No dancing allowed without a permit. You can share your thoughts with us on that or anything on Free Talk Live. Are you ready to surrender your right to buy body armor? No joke. Congress is now trying to outlaw civilian body armor. And if House Bill H.R. 5344 becomes law, you can kiss your right to protect yourself against rifle bullets goodbye. Don't put off your body armor purchase any longer. Go now to InfidelBodyArmor.com. Thousands of military veterans trust their lives to Infidel Body Armor. You should too. Spelled I-N-F-I-D-E-L. Infidel Body Armor. Just won't quit. This is Dan Pillard. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands, and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement, and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpilla.com. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com. Did you know that Free Aid is a mutual aid, educational, and networking organization? At Free Aid, we support volunteers who provide first aid. We do outreach to the public about health and safety, and we bring together medically skilled freedom lovers. Free Aid is made possible by your generous support. Donors can receive great gifts like first aid kits, t-shirts, silver dime cards, and hoodies. The Free Aid Silver Dime Card Project is sponsored in part by Roberts & Roberts Burkridge, Freedoms Phoenix, and Don't Tread on Meme. Visit fr33aid.com. 
DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here. And I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. You can interact with other LRN listeners in our message board at forum.lrn.fm. That's forum.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can take control toll-free here, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We get the chance we'll give you the statement from the party promoter on the crackdown by St. George, Utah police against... Whoa, that was abrupt. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) It's like somebody dropped something on the record player. (laughs) Um, Anyway, we'll get the statement here in a little bit. Uh, The toll-free number is 855-453. No dancing allowed without a permit in St. George. And don't scoff. It could be illegal where you live, and you just don't know that it's illegal because you've probably never tried to throw a dance party before. Uh, We'll get into that here. But first, we go to your calls and your thoughts. Oh, and by the way, don't forget you can visit us online at freetalklive.com. All our features are free there. Uh, But it's not free for us to run this radio show. It does cost money to produce a radio show. It costs money to market the show to new radio stations. And we have a program that can help you back up Free Talk Live, that can help you help us get on more Uh, radio stations all around the country. Also, bring new internet listeners on board. Also, expand our satellite footprint. You can become a Free Talk Live amplifier for just $5 per month, and you can do it with any major credit card through PayPal. You can also use Visa or MasterCard right on our website, which is amp.freetalklive.com. That's where you go to learn more about the AMP program. That's where you can get signed up. AMP, as in advertise, market, promote. AMP.freetalklive.com. We take that five bucks in, and we invest it into the show, spreading the ideas of freedom as far and as wide as possible. Let's continue with your calls and thoughts. John is listening in Charleston, West Virginia, to WVTS. Hello, John. Hey, man. Uh, I got a formula for effective population control without uh, Bill Gates' covert uh, mass murder kind of plot. I'm not sure what Bill Gates might be plotting, but go ahead and tell me your plan for limiting population. Oh, I mean, that whole uh, issue with the uh, vaccine thing over in India. Not familiar Uh, with that. Huh? I'm not familiar with that. Oh, okay. Anyway, uh, basically it's uh, one child per adult and two per marriage. So you would want to use the government, uh, the violence of the state, to enforce rules about who can have kids? Well, that's not really. See, you really got to sell this idea as a politician, and you know, you, you really got to bring the topic up, and uh, you really got to get people to buy into it first. <laughs> so it's not violence if you really sell it. Well, wait, are you talking about persuading people or are you talking about violence? Because you said you have to be a politician, which means it sounds like you're using the violence of the state. No, no. Uh, see, that, it's kind of the whole reason because if this actually is some kind of big conspiracy topic that people are secretly plotting, like Bill Gates and uh, sending bad vaccines to kill a bunch of people, um, 
now they don't have an excuse because it can be done without violence. Wait, so when you just want to clarify, you, you talked about politicians, and those people are agents of the state uh, when they get elected to office. They create laws, and laws are backed by violence. So are you talking about creating a law, or are you talking about just persuading parents to only have, what was it, one child per person person, or two per two marriage? Per marriage. Yeah. Okay. And if you remarry, I mean, it's just a general idea and, you know, really promoting uh, birth control and you know, common sense. But you are just talking, just to be clear, you're talking about just persuading people to follow this? You're not talking about passing a law? Uh, in large part, yeah. I mean, in I really think if people, if people have a choice between uh, a bunch of poor people dying because society doesn't have a use for them, or, you know, Poor people are doing just fine uh, today you know, in the this United isn't, States. This country isn't the one that's growing the population on the planet, right? You're clear on that. Um, I, I don't know. With uh, immigrants coming in, I mean— Well, how many immigrants I'm, do you want to shoot on the way in? factor into all this. I mean, if they can't provide people on welfare, the— if they can't provide welfare for people anymore— well, let's, So it sounds to me like we have a welfare problem, point. not a population problem. It's not a welfare problem. It's a it's an economic problem. It's a no jobs problem. You know, these people don't have a use. These people don't have a use. We need to control they their have population. No use in society. <laughs> That's exactly the way they would look at it. I'm sure. John, instead of putting a cap on the number of children that parents could have. What do you think about the idea of suggesting to parents that they only have as many kids as they can support, whatever that number may be? See, that, I mean, any way you go about it, I mean, that that's really just, if that is a concern with long-term stability, I mean, you really want to give back to the generation that comes after you. You don't want to put them in a crappy place to where in like a hole they can't get out of and a bunch of people have to die. So Too yeah. late. This uh, next generation's in a gigantic hole, several trillion dollars. Do you have kids, John? I really don't think it's that bad if we just uh, put our heads together and decide to have some kind of common sense about what we're doing. Have any kids? I mean, having kids, uh, you know, I really don't think that's the biggest problem this country is facing right now. No, no, no. The question is, you have kids. We bring every every homeless person from Africa over here. John. Hey, John. Derek's yeah, got a question yeah. for you. Will you listen to him? I'm wondering <laughs> if, yeah. if you're part of this problem or not, John. Are you contributing to this population explosion? Are you having kids? I'm, I'm, I got two. Uh-oh. Two, oh, you violated that's more your than own one rule. per person. Interesting I don't know. how the rule, it, 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 it just reaches yeah. right to the amount you've got. <laughs> oh, Anybody who has really more kids than me. I got this list, man. I got... I got Two, they're about two different girls, so... Uh, uh, so that's okay. a loophole. the rule, right? No, nah, he's got his own loophole. See, are, he's a real Are they American girls is what <laughs> so I want to know. Wait, wait a minute. What, what, are these American women you're having sex with? <laughs> <laughs> they're all from uh, uh, that other country. Oh, they're no, all, they're immigrants, wait a minute. too. Okay. So now, <laughs> hold on, hold on. So just to clarify something, um, your rule... I just want to understand the rule. So you said it was one per one child per person or two per couple... But since you already had one child, you would be violating your own rule by going with another woman, right? You shouldn't be able to have more. By your own rule, you wouldn't be able to just go around and impregnate a bunch of women, right? She's entitled to a kid, too. (laughs) So she can have one kid, but you can father as many as you want as long as you have different relationships? Eventually, there's going to be like some kind of court thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or, okay, Sounds like you got this all figured true. out. <laughs> Thanks, John, for the call tonight. I appreciate it. Okay. Watch out for the court things. <laughs> I don't know what I'm listening to there. I really don't. <laughs> Um, yeah, you know, if you can if you can persuade people to reduce the amount of children they're having. Okay. Well, this used to be a thing back in the '70s. You just didn't have kids. You know, you look. 
humans are going to overpopulate the planet, and we need to watch out for that. So everybody gets one kid, two maybe, three no, 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 no. Like this was a this was sort of what the intellectual types were say were saying amongst each other. You just don't do this, and that was uh, you know it was social pressure. It sort of you know made sense at that point, but it, it kind of died out. It ran its course. Uh, the the people began to understand that look, it's not the problem with uh, you know smart people who are going to think about this and care about this having mm -hmm. uh, kids. It's, you know, people living on $2 a day um, in some foreign country, which are really the, the issue. So we have to figure out ways to get them more prosperity. Because the fact is, when people move into the city, out of the country, they have fewer kids, naturally. And that, you know, it changes everything. It's people living rurally. Kids are an asset when you have a little farm. Because you can send them out to do farm work. But <laughs> when, you ha when you're in a city, they're not an asset. They're just a liability. People don't want more liabilities. So they have fewer kids. It's simple. Well, there's obviously still plenty of people that are having kids living in cities who probably shouldn't have them. Ian, I'm not talking uh, about a hard and fast rule that yeah, every single person who lives in the city has no more right, than two no, you're children. you're saying generally over generations that's what happens. No, I'm talking about generally immediately when they move into cities. Right? So, um, yeah, I mean, if you want to persuade people, okay, try to persuade people. But when you start talking about bringing politicians into uh, this discussion, that's an indicator that you're not talking about persuasion anymore. You're talking about a law, and the law is an opinion backed by a gun. And that's not a very neighborly thing to do. You don't point guns at people to get your way. 855-450-FREE. That's the toll-free number. More in moments. Your calls and thoughts are welcome. Free Talk Live. Do you drink coffee? Was the last cup of coffee you had really good? Free Talk Live has teamed up with BuzzBox to bring you the best of the best coffee. Shade grown, organic, top 1% grade Arabica. But what's different is for every 10 people that get their coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com, we can give another micro loan through Kiva. Get a free pound to try it out. A free pound of the best of the best coffee. Help others one cup at a time. coffee.freetalklive.com Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. With autumn in the air, it's time to think about getting ready for winter. And it's time to save at HerbalHealer.com. You'll find amazing seasonal savings to prepare you for the fight against cold and flu season. Like Oregacillin to promote lung health. 30 capsules, regularly $34.95, now only $25. HHA Olive Leaf, the natural antiviral, normally $16.95, now 60 capsules are just $12. HHA Elderberry Power, a great flu and virus fighter, regularly $16.95, 60 capsules, now $10. Save on all our homeopathic detoxes. Choose from lungs, kidney, liver, brain, libido, or whole body, normally $26.95, now just $20. Visit HerbalHealer.com and click on the Fall Winter Specials button to save on all our natural cold and flu-fighting products. Also explore our Herbal Healer Academy correspondence courses that teach you how to handle your health naturally. HerbalHealer.com, healing the world with nature, one person at a time, since 1988. Hi, I'm Derek J. To me, an activist's calling is to actively work to advance a cause. The cause for which I work is personal freedom. I believe my life is best when I engage in voluntary interactions and self-government. I reject the idea that anyone else has a higher claim to my life or my body than I do. I see people who call themselves the government as a threat to my personal freedom. I realize you may feel differently, but my relationship with the people who call themselves the government is completely involuntary. If Starbucks used some of its money to drop bombs, I wouldn't shop there. So why would I support the American empire? The empire does not require my consent. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. That's VictimlessCrimeSpree.com.
The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. Moments remain, but enough time for you if you dial in now. 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733 with you tonight. It's Ian here. Derek J. And Mark. And Derek J., who probably should have taken the night off, uh, came in with uh, kind of a sore throat tonight. You've been doing way too much radio, Derek J. <laughs> I can't uh, stop. You really are. I mean, he's so busy doing uh, more shows than I can quickly count. You've got Peace News Now twice a week. Yeah. Uh, you've got Cop Block Radio once a week. Mm-hmm. You do two Bitcoin shows, right? Yeah, I do Bitcoin Talk Show and The Bitcoin Group. So, what, so one's on Wednesday, the other Friday? That's correct. And how does one find the Bitcoin shows? Through your website, DerekJ.me? The easiest way to find anything I'm doing is to go to my website, which is DerekJ.me. That's a lot of talking. Am I missing something else that you're doing, or is it just four Freedom shows? Fiends. Freedom, I host that's Freedom right. Fiends every Sunday night from 1 to 3 a.m. That's why I'm so tired. Technically, <laughs> Monday, or technically it's early Monday morning, but uh, yeah, late Sunday night, early Monday morning, you're on the Freedom Fiends. That's right. But uh, though my voice may sound tired, I'm very excited to be here, and I think this is important to bring the people the story about St. George, Utah, the crackdown on dancing. Crack down on dancing. Uh, and by the way, dude, I did post that story on our Facebook, Google Plus, and Twitter. There's more detail in there than we'll likely be able to uh, to get to here tonight. Uh, but it is there for you if you want to dig in uh, even further. It's pretty ridiculous. We're going to continue with your phone calls. Check Derek J out. On his website, DerekJ.me. You do more than radio. You've got a sort of a video blog that you've been doing live. Yep. Or Derek J Live is the YouTube channel. Yep. I took some amazing video today of a local store that was hit by eggs. Ugh. So there's a lot of local stuff going on. Lots to see at DerekJ.me. Let's continue with your calls and thoughts. We've got Livewire calling from New Orleans, uh, listening to WGSO. Hey, Livewire. Hey, how's it going? Hey, what's on your um, mind tonight? I haven't. I have on in my hand a newspaper clipping from about a week ago, and the topic here says, Unruly crowd leads to arrest injuries during pumpkin fest. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we made it down to New Orleans. All right. Oh. So I'm just trying to figure out what you guys are doing up there, man. Y'all got a voting block, and y'all got involved in this, this thing here? No. Right? Well, first of all, um, the, the, the involvement that uh, any of us had, and it was pretty much just me, because uh, Derek J, you went home. Uh, I made I, brownies. Yeah, I uh, I wasn't interested in rioting or encouraging anyone to riot. I was interested in covering what was going on, recording a uh, video of what was going on, both of the rioting and of the police response to it. I did that and posted that video, two videos actually, uh, to freekeen.com. So I don't know if you have internet access since you're reading a newspaper, but you may want to uh, go and check out freekeen.com because that's where you can get all good, all kinds of detail uh, that they wouldn't tell you in the Associated Press piece or what Reuters or whichever one you're reading there. Okay, well, they, they seem to have included Free Talk Live in it distinctly. Really? Excellent. What do they say? We'll take the press. Wait a minute. What, what are they saying about Free Talk Live <laughs> and a story about riots uh, in Keene, New Hampshire? Okay, sec- Second paragraph, college officials provided few specifics on the melee, but said Keene State students and Free Talk Live were involved. Oh, oh my I'm goodness. Playing. Uh-oh. <laughs> I, I'm actually playing. No, it doesn't say that. It only oh, says 
uh, Keene State students and out of town visitors. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> well, it is funny. It's I, funny. I guess, it was almost plausible for a moment there because there are certain people in town who absolutely hate uh, the Liberty community here, and they have been saying ridiculous things recently about how uh, the folks, uh, some of the people on this show, were somehow involved in encouraging these riots uh, to happen, which was absolutely not the case. Uh, I don't support how does destruction one exactly of property encourage and violence. A riot. I mean, don't you have to? I mean, you either, you know, aggress on people's property or you don't. You encourage it by saying, come on, guys, let's riot. Yeah, something like that. So there's some sort of words you can say. Uh, Graham Colson uh, was charged with inciting a riot during huh. this recent uh, situation. He says that all he did was tell the cops off, that he didn't, you know, say anything about go turn that car over or throw a firebomb or, you know, pull some signs. He didn't instruct anybody to do anything, but. You know, I guess if I don't know, I guess if you say things they don't like, they can charge you with a felony. I really haven't read the statute in that case, so I don't don't know exactly. Livewire, thanks for sharing that. Anything else you want to uh, get out tonight? Uh, yeah, just that Jesus loves y'all, man. All right, brother. Thanks for the call tonight. Love y'all. Appreciate hearing from you. Let's go to Nick. He's in St. George. You're on Free Talk Live. Hey, Nick. Hey, Nick. what's up? I just want to know what you guys think uh, is going to happen in uh, the November second election coming up. Huh? Uh, who cares? Uh, I mean, whoever wins, you lose. You the liars care. will win. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know right, what? I, right. I, what do you think, Nick? I mean, does it really matter? Ultimately? I think it's a trick question. I think it's the November third election. I don't know. That, that's. I don't know if it really matters, to be honest with you. But um, I've been a big Ron Paul supporter for a while. Um, and what happened to him last election was just. I don't know if you guys know this, but it was completely. Uh, I don't know what the, what the was, word for it is. Is he running, Nick? I think he was pretty much cheated out of it. I'm sorry? Is he running? No. He is not. Okay. Is Ron, Ron Paul has said that he is not Hello? running. Hello? Uh, you're you're still here. I don't know if you can still hear us. No, 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 no. What I'm saying, what I'm saying is that um, I think he was cheated last time. I think, oh, yeah. Uh, I think oh, yeah. that last – I mean, I mean, how did, how did, how did Mitt Romney – uh, get the uh, get the nomination over Ron Paul. I said, well, I, I mean, he's more mainstream. Ron Paul is new to the so, scene for most people. They certainly didn't make it look fair, right? <laughs> I mean, you know, when the, at the Republican convention. No, I mean, I mean, you seen you seen you seen the convention where the you know the the, the Ron Paul activist and and yeah. the Mitt Romney activists were screaming back and forth. Well, so they were keeping really the Ron happened. Paul guys out. I mean, I'm, they were t- cutting their microphones off. They were doing everything they could to prevent the Ron Paul guys from having any kind of impact at these conventions. And that's that's why Ron Paul didn't win. He's It's not because his ideas were the worst. It's because the system is entrenched, and there's almost nothing that you can do to, uh, to win the ideas of liberty inside this crazy D.C. system, which is why I really don't pay much attention. Uh, I pay attention locally, what happens in New Hampshire, but obviously what happens in New Hampshire isn't really going to matter to you in, in St. George. And uh, Nick, thanks for well, the call. Well, can, you, can you explain? Yeah. Yeah, can you explain to people how uh, the GOP, like uh, the Republican Party, actually works? Like, I mean, uh, how they actually uh, nominate a candidate? I don't, I don't know. I don't spend people. any time in party politics. Mark, do you, can you answer that question? Well, I mean, on the national level, it works different in different states. On the national level, apparently, they do whatever the hell they want. Um, was, well, in different you know, states, they saw. did whatever the hell they wanted to. They suspended the rules. Sus- uh, you know, they went ahead and did, they, you know. They'd, they'd uh, end the meeting, then start it back up when everybody left, uh, yeah. all kinds of stuff. Basically, you know, the way it works, Nick, and, and it works this way in both the Republicans and Democrats, is there's a bunch of old guard, and these guys, you know, they don't want to rock, have the boat rocked by some upstart like Ron Paul coming in with his, you know, young supporters coming into their party and screwing everything up for the, you know, for the gravy train for them and their uh, their buddies in in industry, and uh, and so anybody that is a threat to the status quo will be opposed vehemently, and that's what happened with the Ron Paul campaign. And uh, okay, I thank you, so Nick, for you the guys, call tonight. Guys. We're out of time for you, but I appreciate your call. The uh, toll free number is eight fifty five four fifty free. Now look, if you're frustrated with with party politics as they stand. If you are frustrated, if you love freedom, you really need to make the move to New Hampshire. I mean, you, this is the only place where freedom-loving people can actually get elected as Republicans and Democrats. It's happening here, um, unlike anywhere else in, in the whole country. So check out freestateproject.org if you love liberty. And to love liberty, that means you have to understand that other people need to be free too, not just you. 
Uh, and also that in order to be free, you know, that means you can live your life how you want, so long as you don't hurt uh, anybody else. And in fact, Ron Paul endorsed the Free State Project. Um, he's too old to move himself, but, uh, and he, you know, he's happy down there in Texas. But for younger people, even people in their, we've had people in their 60s. Lots of retirees here. are moving up here yeah. I mean, for the Free State Project. Sure. So if you seek, if you're seeking freedom in your life, the national political system is not the way to acquire it. Derek J., let's get the response uh, from the party promoter, Utah, St. George, cracking down on people who just wanted to have a dance party. Heart of Dixie, the people who threw the event said, quote, The city issued a permit. We applied for a special event permit for a dance. It was issued. Then, when they had no way to shut it down... They produced additional pages to the permit that we were not given, on which they had handwritten that the dance was not allowed. And not- they showed these permits, so they showed these extra pages on the day of the dance party right before it started Correct. with the police. Not to mention, we were on private property. It's a First Amendment right to dance. We weren't playing loud music enough to be heard off the property, and when the police were there, no one was dancing. They sent six officers to make sure that no one was dancing. Dancing is not a crime. So they got a dance permit. They changed the the, the government changed the dance permit mm-hmm. so they couldn't dance and took their money for the dance permit, right? That's right. Sounds well, we about right. We don't know what the permit cost them, but uh it's a ridiculous story. It's up at, for, at uh, our Facebook, Google+, and Twitter. You can access all of those by visiting news.freetalklive.com. You can access more of Derek J at derekj.me. And come see him in person this weekend at Keenvention, which we'll tell you more about as the week goes on. Go to keenvention.info to learn more. Tickets are still available. See you tomorrow night. freetalklive.com. If Keenvention is coming up October 31st through November 2nd, get your tickets now at keenvention.info. Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire. You can explore the beautiful little city of Keen, discuss various forms of activism with seasoned veterans, attend social events like the costume party. Keenvention received rave reviews last year. If you missed it, visit keenvention.info for full video coverage of every speaker and panel. This year, James Robin Hood Cleveland, Rich Paul, and Free State Project President Carla Garrick will be keynoting. And we'll have all kinds of panels, including the new Cop Block panel and the new Movers panel hosted by the outlaw Josie Wales. Join old and new friends and neighbors in Keen for Keenvention this October 31st through November 2nd. Only 100 tickets are available in advance, so lock yours in now for just $60 or with Bitcoin. Reserve your tickets now at keenvention.info. Visit keenvention.info for more or look for our page and event on Facebook. That's keenvention.info. Radio is the most personal of mediums. I exist right now in your head. If you listen to Free Talk Live regularly, you know me. Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations around the U.S. and has been downloaded on every continent around the world. Hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 a month to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business, project, website, or idea. Email me, mark at freetalklive.com. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213 213- 